welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, Crypto and Thanks button in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Rod, Todd Wazzle, Jason Hornsby, Christoph Fournier, John Travolta, JMLs24, Yu Unimento, M, Iron26, Endless, Flutter Sage, Goldie McKinnon, Retro Bill, More Books, Canna Bear, Bogey, Michael Kahn, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Melby Styles, Troy Shuka, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo The One, Rob W, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Maria Neeland, Unbelievable Productions, Brewery Ranger, The Real Gabster, Abraham Mohammed, Skeptic 936, Life Is Short, Texas Mike, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Anyways, yeah. So all that plus intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting didn't help me with that matter. Medium and iodine did. How do you spell that? Selenium, like S E L N I U M or N? What? S E L E? Yeah. N I U M. Yeah. Yep, yep, I got it. Okay, I got it. Because I know somebody. And, uh, anyways, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you bet. And you got that, uh, Neil? Look into yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. into gut stuff, right? But selenium iodine, I would recommend as a prophylactic for everybody. Because when I, once I start looking into it, both of those are called micro elements. Both of those elements are actively um, used and actually a key building blocks of your cellular cellular health. I mean, every cell in your body employs those micro elements to function properly. And selenium was discovered fairly recently, right? About three, four decades ago, <clears throat> as being part of every, essentially every function um, of your body. And usually in big cities, uh, really, really, any cities. If you're not on the farm, you would suffer. You most definitely suffer from lack of selenium and iodine. <clears throat> Since the way the foods are grown, they uh, lack those two elements. Which, if you grow foods naturally and eat, you know, healthy grown animal meats, you would not have that problem. It also depends so, on your ancestry. So, 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 let me ask you a question. So this all started in the Industrial Revolution, correct? Because before the Industrial Revolution, everybody was eating properly. No, no it 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 um, made it worse, sure, but you know that, those kind of problems existed since the dawn of man. Like all you had to do is you just move from where you're living. Where your ancestry uh, roots are, where you basically your body and your immune system, your genetics adapted <clears throat> more or less to what the environment is. You move, for example, I don't know, to a slightly warmer, slightly colder climate, you're going to get different foods. So, I mean, your body is not going to cope with it very well. And that's what happens in the world right now. Everybody migrated. <clears throat> everywhere, not realizing that the food that they used to eat is not the food, same food that they eat in the new place. Not realizing that this is gonna, it's gonna impact how your body treats, how your body can, 
how your body processes the foods that you eat. <clears throat> so we have to supplement, like we have no choice. Really nobody's fault. Farmers do their best to grow food. Because uh, because now you have to transport food, you know, a thousand kilometers. How do you preserve it so it doesn't go bad and whatnot? It's just inevitable. But the main point is round this all up. Pay attention to what you eat. Try and supplement uh, with microgreens like selenium iodine and a couple other like vitamin C. Is your daily intake should be at least 500 a.m. And then uh, vitamins like B, like class B vitamins, whether it's uh, 12 other B vitamins. Like don't go nuts, but just do like basic diligence and supplement the body with vitamins. Realize that the food we eat, you buy at the store, <coughs> lacks majority of elements, the key elements that your body requires to function properly. So if it's not functioning properly, they're imagining the engine. Imagine the engine <coughs> running with like, instead of having four quarts of oil, it runs on one quart of oil. It's going to run sheetily. It's going to be shit engine. It's not going to output as much power. It's going to make a lot of noise. It's going to vibrate. Basically, that's 99% of the population. That's dirty. You just have to lubricate, meaning you supplement it properly. Make sure it has building blocks. And make sure you detox. And you can detox the best with hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. intermittent fasting. Everyone, hey Nathan. What do we got in store today? You got any videos, Brian? I posted one there a minute ago, a couple of minutes back. I, I posted it the other day. I don't know. I don't know if it's already been rea uh, reacted to, but I don't think it has. <clears throat> Doctor Becky talking about some new version of gravity that she's postulating. Is that the negative gravity that I keep hearing about? I I, I don't know. I didn't watch it. Uh, I didn't watch it. Uh, but I because of what it was and who it was, I knew it would be safe to share as it's one of her videos. So it's it's not going to be swearing or horsing or stupidity. Well, <laughs> it will be stupidity. But you know what I mean. If we happen, we happen. If we happen reacted to it, then it, it, any of her stuff would be pretty good. For it, I suppose. Hey, Brian, I want to mention something uh, about what you think said yesterday. I can't recall about the YouTube subscriber count allowing you a live stream versus not. Remember that? Yeah. 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 yeah I, I'm going to offer alternative explanation as to why that's okay. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember, but I'm a software developer. I, inter I interact with those kind of problems on the daily basis. Essentially, the reason most likely is you have to be a certain subscriber count in order to live stream because streaming live is expensive. It takes server power, it takes computing power, for which they have to pay. So they need to be sure they can make their money back somehow. And the only way they can ensure is they can push the ads to a certain amount of people. And that certain amount of people would probably be about 15, 20,000. Um, meaning subscriber base, right? You have to take a percentage of it. Not everybody will uh, from your subscription. So that's where the number comes from. You can't possibly enable live streaming <clears throat> for everybody because you're just going to go bankrupt. You're not going to make your money back. So that's the case. Well, yeah, I understand that, and that, that makes obviously it's economic or business business wise, it, it makes sense. Uh, not economic wise, but from a business point of view. Uh, my point was that I have over a thousand subscribers, and I can live stream since I've got the thousand subscribers. Whereas I wouldn't have been able to do that a few years ago, but if uh, I would have needed, uh, I think it was 25,000 or something before I could live stream some years ago, or a lot more, 10,000, whatever it was. 
Uh, but the number, I think, started at 25,000 and came down. But the point I was making is I can now live stream from one, for 1,000, with, one, with just over 1,000 subscribers. Um, but many years ago, I would have needed more subscribers to do that. But I also would have been able to get yeah. those subscribers. And yeah, because the years ago would cost yeah the years ago would cost a lot more to rent uh, cloud servers. Right now they've gotten cheaper, and that's why those prices are going down. Another thing to keep in mind is, <clears throat> from an economic standpoint, very few people would actually pay to live stream. Like, would you pay to live stream? I pay for Google Plus for the for the you know, for the main panel. I hate saying main panel because it sort of demeans you guys and G uh, Discord a little bit, but yeah, I pay for that. Yeah, but how much does um, it cost to live stream? But, if you were to pay without, you know, not just the Google, what is he on, talking about? It depends on what you want to use. So I know certain services uh, cost to use and they have like a free version that you can have their water stamp on or watermark on rather. But you know, it depends on what quality you want to broadcast and what facilities you want from the broadcasting software. Not everyone just uses open broadcasting software. Yeah, but my point was... Um, um, sorry, it's a complete tangent to your point. I'm really sorry, Rebel. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, my point was to, to say that there is economics reason for that, not necessarily malice behind it. Well, how, how I would view it, Rebel, is this. <clears throat> that YouTube will allow me to monetize my channel if I want with the small amount of subscribers I have, and I can live, live stream. But I, I view that as them keeping the likes of me, which did have a lot of people like me, uh, that will be, uh, let's just say, uh, not promoted. Uh, so I won't get the subscribers and the views. But it's a bit like how I view what you're talking about there on YouTube, how I'd amalgamate the two things, what I was talking about yesterday and what you're talking about. It's a bit like a supermarket. A supermarket will sometimes sell things at a loss, but the whole point of it is is to keep the customers coming in. So a big supermarket will sell like a beer or something at a loss uh, in the hope that you do other shopping and they make a profit uh, truly, uh, purely through you buying other things while you're buying that beer or through the fact that you are literally promoting and advertising their store when you have their products in your place. You know, Small little things, even a plastic bag that you have that has the name of their shop on it is promotion. So they work off of that angle. So I reckon YouTube have the money, have the money and the wealth to be able to do that, that they could be working that way. They're not making any profit off the looks of me. Very, very, very small channels who are live streaming and, and, and monetizing. They may not be making much money, even a, a loss sometimes. But I reckon that it's, it's a case of keeping the customers. Kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah. Maybe YouTube's, I'm wrong. YouTube's going to be, or in some ways, and I'll give you an example in a second, is replacing TV. So today, um, I went to take my wife shopping. It's her birthday in a few days. So I took her shopping and I had our eldest daughter with us. And to keep her occupied in one of the shops, I took her over the to, to the toy department. And one of the toys, <laughs> and a little yellow sticker, uh, yeah, whatever colour it was, I don't know, red sticker, it said, as seen on YouTube. I'm like, Oh, right. I remember walking around toy stores in the 80s and it was as seen on TV. Now it's as seen on YouTube. Wow. Yeah. you got to yeah. be kidding me. I never see, I haven't seen that yet. That is not the but first time right I've seen that, that either. YouTube, it just happened. YouTube is. Sorry. I was just going to say, it, it happened to be today, but it's not the first time I've seen that. Well, YouTube is definitely replacing <laughs> TV. That's a fact. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's been the case. <laughs> I was working at the company and competing with um, that market space. Believe me, YouTube ate everybody's lunch. And that was that was happening at least eight years ago. Yeah, it's not, it's not a brainer. But I want to I wanna add something to what Brian was saying. YouTube making profit or not. Um, I can almost guarantee you, with even 25,000 YouTube lives, uh, allowing you to live stream, 
YouTube is at a negative. You can't possibly make a profit on that. The thing about it, though, you have to remember, um, YouTube is a company where they have a huge burden of liability, right? Because every live stream has to be not just simulcast um, across whatever, how many users are watching across the uh, I'll check my check. On, hey, can you, you sound good? You cross content network delivery hubs and whatnot. Everybody has to pay for those things. But also the biggest cost they endure is employing AI and video processing algorithms to make sure you don't stream porn. Right? That is the most expensive bit. Right? At least your language will not, because you, you can't possibly manually review every effing stream. Right? It's all algorithmically processed. If you have that process algorithmically, uh, it's a lot of computational power. So they'll lose their short on 25,000 subscribers being live stream in hope that some of them get bigger to make up for it, which they do. So there's a I lot wanna, more going on behind the scenes uh, than meets the eye. I want to say something about the, you know, just feeling old when you look at products on the shelf, you know, when you go out to the shops. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And um, so I saw we lost you again, James. No, we lost. Yeah, now we, we lost him or I lost you guys. Okay, yeah, they they make the uh, remotes very small, very user friendly. And the kid on TikTok was uh, his mother noticed that he kept holding the remote the other way. You know, and he was wondering why it didn't work because it, had an, it was an IR monster type of remote. And he goes, why do you keep holding it this way? And he, he looked at the TV button and he says, look, the TV stand is this way. So he had it backwards. He goes, no, that's not a stand. That's the antenna. But a child would not know what an antenna is. So the kid had the control backwards. All right. <laughs> Just funny Thrilling. things to note. And kids also think that the uh, a three point five inch stiff floppy disk is a print three D printed uh, save icon. That's a two point five actually, right? Three point five. Hey Nathan, three point five is an audio jack, I believe. Yes. No, no, he's, he's on about a floppy disk. 3.5. Oh, Sleeping Warriors here. Who's that, Anthony? What's up, hey, Anthony? Hey, hey, hey. All you have to do is look at the, look at the name. <laughs> Definitely Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I remember my, that's, my that's, that's the voice that got me hooked onto this show, to be honest. Uh, uh, Anthony's voice is so calming. Like, I started listening to you guys when you're like, you show so, number 50. You say it's so common? Calming. Calming. Oh, calming. Anthony sounds yeah, like yeah, one I of those we'll... UK teenagers they interview on the street. Oh, thank no, you. No, I'll no, take that as a compliment. Anthony is rough, my rough uh, personal technician. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Nathan? Uh, Nathan, he said, can I, I, can I, I hear can one I, of those teenagers sorry, being um, interviewed on the street, and I was like, what, rough AF? <laughs> no, I took it as a compliment. When was the last time you spoke to the kids at college, Anthony? Have you ever gone back, or what was the story with that one-time deal? No, I never saw those two kids again ever again. No, never got in touch. But listen, the reason why I joined is because I saw Nathan's joke—not uh, Nathan's joke, Nathan's video entitled "Scum." Have yeah, you guys all seen that yet? I haven't. I have. Magical, You're talking like where, back, where back in the day, like originally. No, no. I don't know. Nathan, do you want to describe it for those that have not seen it? Well, better would be that you describe your feelings about it while I queue it up and just play it as it's only a two-minute video. Okay, so I watched it, and it encapsulated everything that is wrong about, for me, about teachers teaching kids lies. Whether you ascribe that to conspiracy cats or whether you ascribe that to your own headmaster or your own subject teacher at school or what your kids are being taught by teachers in school – We've all got a common reference point that we can basically relate, relate to directly. 
And when you realize that there is no evidence for the assumed radius of Earth, and you realize that the kids are being taught it as if it's a matter of fact, and then you see a, cha a teacher who admits that he teaches this as matter of fact, but when challenged, he basically accepts that there's um, a uh, uh, he accepts that there's a um, begging the question fallacy, and then he won't retract or re reposition himself to be honest. It, it drives me insane that our kids are taught this. It, it literally Is makes that me mean, cringe. That Matthew teachers uh, um, irate of uh, Mason. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I yeah, like Matthew, to you, but you did intonate earlier that you'd got some form of measurement that you'd then take into calculation to give you your R value. What's pointing out here is there isn't any measurement or interaction at any point. It's all just in calculation and assumption. Earth is a sphere. I'm, all I say is that he used that to measure the radius, not to prove that the Earth is a sphere. The, the same radius that so, you said was never measured. Necessarily come up very often, but that's a fallacy in logic called begging the question. Right. If you're trying to uh, prove stop. that the Earth stop. is the globe. Stop. Yes, you was your reply. Your yes, fallacy in logic is your justification for lying to the kiddies. It is a fallacy in logic to say that the, uh, to, to use the radius of the Earth to prove that the Earth is a sphere. Correct. Yeah, so I've conceded that nobody's ever measured the curvature of the Earth. The Earth is a sphere. I'm, all I say is that he used that to measure the radius. Measure the radius. You tell the kids that Aristosthenes did what? Please repeat. Uh, he calculated the radius. No! Uh, that's not what, not what you, you said, said before, though. I'm trying said. to explain what I'm telling the kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I hate you. Yeah, I hate you. You're the reason I homeschool. You're the reason I homeschool my kids, because I don't want people like you to teach my kids. You disgust me, and I do believe you should be fired. The yes, very fact man. that you've come here, have you taken down your video with the incorrect information that you conceded here when you joined? Have you taken that down? No. And I Scum! Fire him! He's more than content to continue to perpetuate his bullshit lies that he's conceded. He hasn't taken his video down. He's not got an ounce of integrity. Have you, Matthew? Take your video down and put one up with the corrections and acknowledge us in them. Acknowledge me personally for the corrections I gave you and acknowledge the world is flat. I'm not asking you to give your heart to Jesus. I'm asking you to have some intellectual integrity. Do it. So that was Scum on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel. Hope you all enjoyed. That laugh, I'm sorry. Feels like you're that a different laugh, person. That laugh, that laugh convicts him. He's a lying bastard. The main issue with, with teachers is they put their own job security ahead of um, integrity. It's always the case. Very I've been crying this. Listen, I've been screaming this for years now, what's being taught in the schools. Two plus two is four. Yeah, but after math, what do they, what do they teach you, really, that's uh, significant? Nothing. Um, well, that's I truth. look at schools as just a glorified daycare, right? It's just the teachers are there to make sure kids don't kill each other. That's it. You know, the main education. Yeah, they fell at that. Uh, yeah, I'm passing by the school right now. They got shot up yesterday. They, they fell at that too. One was killed yesterday here in Dallas. It, that guy who was uh, speaking there, I mean, he was really suffering cognitive dissonance, wasn't he? Because I just don't understand that he couldn't see what he was, he, he couldn't get it, could he? Oh, he uh, got it. He couldn't have gotten it. No, no, no. He he kind of got it, but didn't. Because if he actually got it, he would have had to face. He admitted to the flat um, plane. The choice. This is the reason have, why have to face the choice. Is, this is the reason why conspiracy cats is the best example, because he's very proud and he 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 promotes himself to be like a a guru, right? A a, a better quality teacher than the average teacher. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. He does present himself like that. He's very affable. He's very confident. He's very capable at his, his maths and his sums, his formulas, and all that kind of stuff. And to a child, it's one of the most trusted professions out there. To a child, a teacher is one of those people that, I mean, we've all got fun memories of our best teachers, right? All right, we remember our bad ones too. But teachers is one of the most trusted professions because it's deemed as, or it's perceived 
as not political, right? It's de- it's perceived by pretty much everybody that it's devoid of politics and it's based purely on facts or or truths or whatever no, you want to accept no. to be credible. No, Anthony, um, as somebody who actually taught for many years, I can tell you that uh, middle and high school teachers are one of the dumbest people I've ever interacted with. They just teach well, the, the curriculum. Making, the point I'm making is with respect to like the gas pressure without a container, we cite conspiracy cats when he says, quote, without the balloon, there can be no pressure, whilst he's dotting on his whiteboard with his dabber, and he's pointing out that without the container, there can be no pressure. He's literally pointing, and that when you, when, you, when you spit that back to him, when you catch him, he runs away from chats. He will not talk to you about it. He'll, and if you, get, if you corner him in with a microphone in front of him and he's on the record, he will try and turn the conversation against you in some way and vilify you in some way. So Nathan's bound to get a lot of hate for that video. But the fact remains that the teachers are lying to children. I've said it from day one. I'm saying it again. They lie to them about everything. They lie to them about gravity. They lie to them about um, the, the radius. All of the heliocentric nonsense is lies. Now, do they know about it? And do they know that it's a lie? Well, with respect to gravity, they are taught at undergrad that, 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 that it's Einstein and it's not a force. But they still teach it to kids as though it is a force, even though they know that it's wrong. Now, with conspiracy cats, didn't do a, a physics degree, I, I believe. He did um, biology instead. So, in his case, he weren't told. So that might negate to some extent his his his, his perception. But he now definitely does know, and he's not around very much anymore, as as far as I can tell. And because he's not around very much, he's not accountable. He doesn't want to address the point. But we've we've been saying for a long time, how do you have gas pressure without a container? Conspiracy cats runs from that question, but nonetheless, kids are still being taught it. Still, kids believe that gas can f- like just float around here and not go anywhere without yeah. a container. Anthony, he not only we know Anthony, this, he not only I, runs, I, I, he not only I, I, runs. I'm gonna push back. He on does, this. One second. He not only on runs. This. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Rebel. Yeah. So, what you're describing, Anthony, and same goes for Nathan. Um, you're not incorrect, but having my run runnings and you know experience with teachers in most prestigious schools in the world, I can tell you with a strong degree of certainty, most of them, and I mean 99% of them, are dumb as rocks. They cannot possibly comprehend the arguments at the level of this uh, podcast, of the show. No, I, don't, I don't believe that. You simply, dude, believe me, they do not comprehend it. They just don't. Hold on I'm a second. I'm fairly Tommy Hench, person, hold on even for me. Tommy Hench went on Conspiracy Cats, debated him. Conspiracy Cats said, I'll get back to that question. Never got back to it. Never answered the question. You think he doesn't know? I think no, no, he does. Know. You know, one, person, one, person is, one, one person is not uh, a rule. I'm telling you my experience for many years. One of the dumbest people I've ever interacted with other teachers you guys giving them too much credit too much credit i agree you have to understand they're literally dumb literally dumb i have worked with them i have neighbors that are teachers they cannot possibly even begin to comprehend the level of discussion this podcast has can't even begin well, so we are talking we're about, we're talking about like, conspiracy cats you're all, you're all missing something about conspiracy cats conspiracy cats can tell the students all day long that without the balloon, there can be no pressure. Because in his paradigm, gas pressure and atmospheric pressure are two different pressures. And that's how he squares that circle. That's ridiculous. So, yeah, but that's what, this is, this, is, this is how they square that circle. You know, when he walks outside, the air that's outside is under pressure for a different reason than the air that's inside. Yeah, but hang on. Do you understand? I don't think we should, that's, I don't think we should, I don't think we should credit him with like um, that's how they square the peg. That's actually the lie. There is no difference between it gas is. pressure and atmospheric pressure. Just because they call it something else and then conceptualize some other explanation for how this new concept exists doesn't negate the ability or the the fact that it's the same pressure. So are we crediting yeah. him for uh, in ignorance and innocence when he doesn't deserve it? I think we are. 
No, no, I agree. I, I'm not saying that he, I don't. He's, he or would always he, uh, be honest. Uh, the point is that if he's asked about it, w- if he's asked about the air outside, he could start talking about a force of gravity. That's the point. Yeah, Which, yeah. You know that's, what I mean? That, uh, let me yeah. just clarify that because I agree with that, Brian, definitely. And I had to disagree with QE the other day because he was saying, well, atmospheric pressure is is just gas pressure. And my answer to that was no, it isn't. In the same way as atmospheric refraction isn't refraction, atmosphere isn't air. There's no atmosphere. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't exist. There's no sphere-shaped air. So you can't say, well, if there isn't, if this thing doesn't exist, how can you describe it as being the same as gas or having gas pressure. The whole point of describing it as being sphere-shaped air is so you can negate things like entropy and they can say things like the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to the Earth because of the atmosphere. So it's their justification. In other words, they've taken it away from the behaviour of gas when they say atmosphere. Just to disagree with you, Anthony. And I've also disagreed with QE on the same score. I don't get it. I don't get it because then, then you're talking about a model. Yeah, that's exactly right. You're talking about the maths of the model when you say atmosphere. You're no longer talking about yeah. the air you breathe at all. Like what you're not talking about be... like you're not talking about light deviating from straight when it traverses a different medium, aka Snell's law, when you talk about atmospheric refraction. There is no atmosphere and there is no atmospheric refraction. You're talking about Muppet vision, you're not talking about light going through anything when you're talking about the light traversing the model in the atmosphere. Well, the atmosphere is the justification for the light bending in the model, but is that what you're breathing? No, there's nothing there. It doesn't even exist in the model. You can't see it. It's not drawn out. It's just a justification for bending a line and making the sphere Earth a bit bigger when it looks flat. So and to allude to that, there is no and to allude to that, there is no troposphere, thermosphere, or stratosphere. Correct. Okay. Right. But does that Nathan's point there, does it negate the dishonesty elements? Because like in my experience, it compounds it because it's reification if you're going to treat a model as though it's the real world. Yes. Especially when it's pointed out that there's no science for that model. Correct. My disdain is, is the that, same as yours, Anthony. And we've, we've discussed this on many occasions. My disdain is your disdain, right? Because at the point that they have it pointed out to them, then they have they have any uh reasonable retort when you say you do know. You've pointed out, and we can give you your own words. That's why I was so annoyed with um, Matthew Weathers. Because at the point that he concedes and can parrot back the issue, you can't then turn around and say, I'm going to teach the kids it anyway, which is basically what he did. In fact, he did say exactly that. That was pretty much verbatim quote. I'm going to teach the kids anyway. All right, so in, face of, in the face of all these contradictions, you just don't care. You're going to teach it anyway, anyway. You know, th- at that point, Anthony and my disdain kicks in. You're like, well, you're scum. Well, he actually said he's going to teach them what he believes he's teaching them is correct. So he's going on a belief oh, and my- not reality. So exactly. Should, should a mathematician be l- leaning on the um, m- m- experts and m- beliefs? No. No, no, definitely not. When it's not something that's um, debatable in terms of mathematical language, I'm not saying you can debate... You, you can debate if it's claimed to be physics, which it isn't. But I'm t- in terms of some of the concepts in logic of maths, there's no beliefs involved. It's it's a very sort of cut and dry subject in that regard. Well, for him to say, well, yeah, but I believe that the satellite's in an orbital motion and I'm going to ignore the Cartesian grid system. It's like, which one airs towards the side of mathematics? The Cartesian grid system that's very much definable within the language of maths. It's the perfect language for it. Or the belief that... The information coming for the Cartesian flat system has come from orbiting satellites that he's not experiencing and just believes in. You know, as a mathematician, that's um, intellectual dishonesty as far as I'm concerned, to appeal to the non-mathematical concept that he has a belief in, which is how he justified it. It's a bit like spherical triangles. They're all X, Y, Z from a centre point. Just points on the surface of a sphere. Points on the surface, points on the surface of, of, of surface. That are then just you using the R value of those uh, circles. You just just uh, attached up the lines using the arc. But it's, problem, it's mathematically, it's mathematically, it, it's fraudulent. Yeah, the problem with spherical triangles is that they may well exist in their concept, but they have no apps. They've got no benefit when it's coming to the point that the the triangles are used for, which is to calculate distances to objects.
Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon, crypto, and thanks button in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. Now we are joined by Eli, Tenth Man, Neil, Brian's Logic. Uh, I don't know what he's going to be going. I'm going to just call him by his name in the show, which is Teachers Lie to Children. It's actually Sleeping Warrior, a.k.a. Anthony. Also Arwin and a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. You're such an instigator, Anthony. Hello. Greetings, greetings. Good afternoon. It is true, though. All teachers hello, hello. do Good right. Good afternoon. Is it to it make is point there. Go ahead, Anthony. It is true, though, all teachers do lie to children when it comes to the teaching of, of the heliocentric science that they get taught in school. They do lie to children. It is true. Well, thank you for clarifying that, Anthony. Not if they don't believe they're lying, though, according to Matthew. If they believe they're telling them the truth, then everything's okay, Anthony. Okay, straight after Was that his ultimate... Uh, just uh, just sort of the audience is kind of it. straight after the discussion with Matthew learns, like immediately afterwards, um, there was a moral discussion, let's just call it, about whether or not it was reasonable to declare that he was lying because we couldn't establish malice. So this has been discussed at great lengths. I even at the beginning of the following show put out an apology to say, no, I don't think I've met that standard, therefore unreasonable. Now, having yeah, but... flip-flopped on this already... Uh, I still stand by the fact that I don't think we'd met the standard based on what we went through, which is to say, in his cognitive dissonance, he can't be ascribed malice. Now, it doesn't change my temperament or tone, or and I'll Hang continue on. to ch chunk out videos that give my initial gut reaction to it, which is my, you know, can't get away from your gut reaction, and that still stands, and that's what we're discussing here, right, Anthony? Sure, but let's just consider that point about dishonesty. Um so ultimately, if this was going to a court, I know they all say that oh, it's not a courtroom. It's this is science, and it's not even science; it's pseudoscience. But there's been recently a change in the law with regards to how we, um, how the how the ordinary person would describe whether something's um, dishonest or not. It used to be the case that if somebody holds an honest belief in their own mind that what they were doing was honest or not dishonest, then that would be acceptable. If they didn't realise that what they were doing was dishonest then it would be protected by the law. But that changed in 2015. It's called the Jentings Casino case, and it flipped it around the other way. Now it's not a subjective belief. Um, you can't hide behind that anymore. Now it's the objective standards from ordinary people that would they would consider to be. So it's not, it's not objective, not subjective. So like we can judge whether or not he has. And all of the teachers that teach this nonsense, they're all dishonest by that standard. And that is the standard in the court today. Hello. Hey, D Rose. No, no, I was saying hello, like, like preach, like the like the congregation said, "Amen." Oh, okay. Anthony to Anthony, yeah. Mm, oh, yeah. I don't know if I necessarily agree. I mean, yes, that might be the current standard. And somebody actually put a comment to that effect under. I think it might have been the Matthew Learns Debate video. Um, no, no, it wasn't. It was it was a different show. But the point was, I was talking about a, a, a standard in terms of communication currently, where we broadcast everything, record everything, and our phones are tracking our position and ping data all times, or everywhere we go. And that's kind of just now accepted because of the, the social media aspects that our lives are so enriched by. So, you know, we sort of accept this standard, which has been softened, we've been softened up to by a much more harsh version of it with things like Minority Report. But when you point this new standard out to people and say well okay you're already involved in a world that that offers up a deception and i say well as long as you're not doing anything wrong 
then don't worry about it. Or how I should have phrased it, I recognise that there's a, 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 lots, a, a lot of means to keep tabs on me by this methodology of the internet. And I recognised it as soon as I used the internet. But maybe in the show, the way I put it across to people didn't sound you know, quite right. But nevertheless, the, the commenter came back and said, well, no, that's, that's the world that you start in until they change one of the rules. In other words, what you've been documenting quite happily without worried, worry about, you know, you, the p police coming and taking your phone out of your pocket, going through all the data and going, ah, yeah, look, you are doing something illegal, clearly. But if that standard suddenly changes, like you're describing in 2015, then do you suddenly have a moral obligation to change your position? Well, no, I, I don't think so. It, that might be the standard of the time, but ultimately speaking, your own cognitive battle, that, that's your own. In other words, Matthew has to, as I told him right at the end, just before he went, you have to face your own battles or demons or however I phrased it in regards to your deceit with your students. That's your own problem that you have to face. He has to deal with those demons, right? Now, I'm not going to tell him that because the social standard is that, no, no, it's, it's now been deemed a lie, when he's like telling me quite clearly i don't think i'm lying to the kiddies you know i can't t then turn around after the fact and say no the standard is such that the public see it as us we all understand now that it's flat therefore you globe believing peddling lies can you can all get locked up for the sake of argument just to make it extreme well that's where i disagree i mean i understand where you're coming from but what i'm saying is he's not he's got to pay his mortgage he got to tell his wife, honey, I'm going to quit teaching. Why? Well, because Nathan brought it to my enlightenment. Da, 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 da. Are you crazy? We've got a children. And he's not going to sacrifice that. He's going to stand on his ground that he believes it. He he thinks what he's saying is correct because okay. that's what he has to do. Well, well, to salvage it's not about no, 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 no. That's a standard teacher. I can apply. No, it's not, no, it's not, no, not let about just, Let me just, hold on. Let me just respond to D-Rose's claim, right? Because th there's been a point in my life where I had to make that decision myself. So I've got a job as a manager and a pawnbroker. Now, that was the job I could get. That's the job I went into. I tried to do the best job I could as a manager. However, there were certain aspects of personal loans, which at the time were all on the headline news in terms of how scammy they were. And I couldn't bring myself to do them. I didn't do any of them. In fact, no, I did one in training and the guy reneged on it. <laughs> Postman just laughed at me on the phone because it was completely unsecured. But... They were very profitable for the company and they pushed me to do them and I didn't want to do them. And at the point where it got to the, me being, you know, getting in trouble, you're not doing these, we need you to do them. If you get it wrong, it'll come out your salary, but we need you to do them, right? That was the attitude. Now, it wasn't because they were threatening to take the money if it went wrong or went sideways out of my pocket that scared me. It was the debt I was putting the customer in, the debt that I knew that they would find themselves... Uh, in a bottomless pit that they couldn't escape from the moment they handed uh, I handed money to them. And I just couldn't morally do it. Now, eventually, I left the job because I, with all the mortgages and all the stuff I had to pay, and the same, I was married. I, you know, I didn't have kids at the time, but I was certainly in a position where I had responsibilities. But I went, I don't want to do this. I can't put the place I love, because it was in my hometown, I can't put my local people into this crippling debt. I can't morally do it. So I didn't. Now, if you're saying morally, he's got a mortgage, but, you know, to keep his mortgage being paid, he's kind of got to lie to the kids. That's just an accepted... Well, you know, like me, well, yeah, I, I had to leave and find something else to do. I went and got a crap job delivering groceries for Tesco. Well, that's, what, that's kind of the thing that you do when you go, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, you make a choice. You give up the, whatever it was at the time, the 20, 25K or whatever the crappy manager's salary was. Actually, by, by comparison to what I had now, it's like like gold. It was a step down from the rep job I'd had, let's put it that way. And it seemed like not a great deal of money. But that's because you got morals, Nathan. Right. There you go. Cause, oh, that's, that's my point. Nathan. That's my point. D. Rose is saying, well, he's got a mortgage to pay. And I know he's only playing devil's advocate to make the point. But no, right. you've got it at some point. If you, at the point he's here to try and sharpen his arguments against his students, someone told me. Oh, that's hearsay. I don't know if that's true. But let's just pretend for the sake of argument that it is. So he's only in the arena so that if it comes up in discussion with his students, he can have a quick, sharp response that will overcome their objections and he can move on with the authority of a teacher to keep the lesson in line. Okay, makes sense. But if on that rabbit hole journey of keeping your students in line so you can keep your lesson plan sharp, sharp and frosty so you can pay your mortgage, you find out that you're lying... 
and you can't overcome any of those problems, then unfortunately, whether you like it or not, you've got a moral choice to make. Well, if you fall on the wrong side of that choice, you can have someone like me calling you scum to your face. And your response, in this case, Matthew Learn's response, was to say, I don't think I'm scum, I don't think I should be fired. And me turn around and say, you've conceded where you were wrong. You've told us, as your opener, how we have corrected you on how you were wrong. You've subsequently been corrected about how wrong you are with triangles that you didn't seem to understand at a certain point because of how cognitively dissonant base your brain was at the moment that it was pointed out to you that we were just discussing a right angle triangle well all of these things suggest either total incompetence or outright lies that's how i viewed it at the time now i can highlight that to his face and then say as a justification you scum now that that has been done to him because of the moral choice he made and which side of the fence he fell now I don't want to fall on a side of a fence as a pawnbroker that was offering personal loans to people, payday loans, they were called, where someone in my town, I could walk out tomorrow, head held high like I do, I don't want to walk past someone and go, you crippled me back in 20, whatever the hell it was, 12, 20, 2013. You absolutely crippled me. I only took 200 quid off you and I ended up thousands in debt. And I'd be like, oh God. And that person would berate me, wouldn't they? Because they'd yeah. have a good right to. Yeah, and just so we can keep well our mortgage deserved. paid. Well, I don't now, have that Nathan, problem. Now, Nathan, let's compare what you were doing compared to what Matthew's doing. A lot of people would say, just like they say now, what's the big deal? It's not going to change my paycheck, whether the world is curved or the world is flat. I'm not doing no harm. People would say, what harm is Matthew doing besides deceiving children? Whereas you were putting people in 300 to 1,000% debt by a scam, pretty much. So that's another thing we have to go up against. Some people don't look at what these heliocentric priests are doing is wrong. Would have. Because Hold on. That, just let me just correct that. Would mm -hmm. have past future tense. In other words, I didn't actually right, do that. Have. I never put anybody in any right. ever. I got you. I got you. know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know, that's why you stepped off because you didn't want to do that. But let's, you know, hey, Matthew's been doing it. Yeah, I'm sorry. But not the way you um, Nathan, in response to Matthew at all. <clears throat> the way you guys describing it, like I, I didn't feel like it was directly um, addressed to Matthew. I, I, I felt like Matt, uh, Nathan, correct me if, you, if I'm wrong, but you weren't really talking to Matthew. You were talking to, um, to the principal. You, 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 you were saying things to be able to stand the test of time for future posterity. Let's put it that way. I, I kind of know what you're driving at. Right? Matthew, the education. I, I, I get it. What, 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 what you're suggesting is that he's he's my poster child in that example. However, I, I was saying it to Matthew, and I couldn't have been capable of saying it to him personally unless it was personally applicable to him. So while I do agree with you, he becomes my poster child in that regard. Not only for the fact that he put my link to the video, which is what I said when he arrived but also for the cognitive dissonance-based slash lie, depending on where you want to sit on this discussion, you know, that he represents. In other words, yeah, you're right, but he does represent that lie as a teacher in those specific circumstances that do specifically apply to him. So, mm, yeah, you're right, but I don't know where you were going to go with that, and I hope I haven't cut the legs off where it was going. Rebel? Yeah, so in, in part, I was going with this um, in a direction of saying that the way I took it is that you're not, like your comments and your response was, was harsh, like no doubts about it. But it wasn't necessarily, in my view, directed, even though maybe at the time you were speaking to him directly. But the way I took it is that you're speaking at the principle of how uh, these people approach the subject, approach their um, um, integrity. And what you've said may not have been pleasant to most people, but it will definitely be, you know, um, I would call you a visionary because you know, you're the podcast that actually takes it heads on. Um, being a visionary, this will stand the test of time. And that's all I really care about. I don't really care about how Matthew took it or how many hearts it was, you know, your comments broken or how many people got upset? The, the 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 pertinent question here is: Will it stand the test of time? And I think 
it will. Rebel. 100% it will. And Amen. Go ahead. Rebel, the thing is, Nathan used Matthew to rebuke the whole education system. That's the way I see it. Um, I, it yeah, was I gotta, just, Matthew was just the face of it, right? At the time. Yeah, we, hold um, on a second. Just one sec, Rebel. Go ahead, go ahead John. We will come well, back to you. The, the only problem I've had with this entire conversation is we want to make analogies of something similar and then say, well, that would be lying. But you just can't do that with this topic because it is so all-encompassing. I mean, it's it's massive. I don't know if there's anything you can compare it to. The only so way to only compare reason. it is to take... Exactly. Three... Because it's massive topic, because it's massive topic, you can't possibly have a cordial conversation in trying to encompass all the complexity of the discussion, you know, in a meaningful, like, one-minute segment, right, of most people's, you know, attention spans, right? So you drive in the strongest possible points in the most intense manner, which is what Nathan did, right? And, of course, people didn't like it, you know, a lot of them. Like, I loved it. It was shocking at first, but then I'm like, okay, that's actually exactly how well, you're you supposed to do this. Way, Rebel. this is, well, this... No, I ain't saying I didn't like the discussion points. I, I'm just saying that to to say that this man is a liar because of his worldview, I I just I'm not. Okay, I'll, I'll let me, put let it me to just give it a quick. Let you, me just sorry, screen. guys. Let me just give okay. it a quick comparison to the Matrix, right? So you've got a scene in the Matrix where Neo's in training with Morpheus. And they're having the, a big old fight and all the rest of it. And at, at, at a point in the fight, Neo's got his hands on his knees. He's doubled over and he's going. <gasps> <sighs> and Morpheus is like, what are you doing? Now, if you imagine for that moment that the reply from Neo was, I'm out of breath. I'm breathing deeply because we've just had a big old fight and I'm out of breath. Right. Now, imagine that was his response. Now, he doesn't give that response, but Morpheus says, do you think that's air you're breathing? Because he's in a simulation. He's sat on a bed somewhere with a stick up his head. He's not moving. He's not breathing deeply because his muscles aren't moving around on that position that he's not moving around in. He's in a simulation, so he doesn't need to double over and breathe. Okay, so we've got the scene set. Now imagine that in that moment, Morpheus turns around to Neo and says, you're lying. You're lying to me. I've told you. You know you're in a simulation. Don't lie to me. Now, at that point, Neo is still, when he's being told he's a liar, going, <gasps> because it's so paradigm shifting to contemplate that your lungs aren't functioning that he can't wrap his head around it. Even though he's been told, he's been explicitly pointed out, he's had the stick shoved in his head, he's gone into the simulation, he knows he's in it, but yet he's still breathing in and out. Liar? That's No. No, no he's not a liar, is he? But he's breathing in and out, stupid idiot. Mind, stop your lungs working. That's what you're asking Matthew to do. You're asking him to stop his lungs working. You can't That's do it. I love the yet. example. I love the example. Can I, can I just expand it yeah, a little bit? Great. Instead of Morpheus telling Neo, Morpheus turned around, looking at the camera, and start yelling at the camera, saying, you think this is air you're breathing, you idiot, you dumb? That's not the air you're breathing in. You're in a simulation. So that's how I took your uh, tirade, quote-unquote. Now Matthew. I'm back on like the other side of really, that illustration. Yeah, it's like you turning yeah. around and looking at the camera, right? Breaking the fourth wall, so to speak. And if yelling Morpheus at the camera saying, you were scum. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. Happened. You could lose them. I don't know. Oh, sorry. I was on mute while I was trying to bring up somebody's um uh K how do you say that? Kanye K Kanye West. <laughs> Welcome to Penguin. Thank you very much indeed for joining. That was it. That's all I wanted to do. It doesn't uh, apply to the Matrix, Brian. 
Yeah, that's the thing, you see. It, like, so when Rumba said the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth, what he was talking about was his globe model. So is he being stupid there? Is he being dishonest? Or is he just being honest? You know? Well, he's being sneaky, that's for sure. He is wordsmithing. He knows he's wordsmithing when he does that. But does he have full grip of, with his consciousness over what he's doing in that moment? Doubtfully. The bottom line is well, we, we wouldn't have anti-flat earthers if, 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 if we were correct about their deceit in this regard. With if malice of forethought, you know, that we would, there just wouldn't be the existence of these people because all we would have is obvious liars. But in the case of Matthew, he's a really good example because he is a trusted member of the community. He is, let's just say, I don't know either way, but let's just say he is a good maths tutor, a good maths educator. So therefore, as somebody that's sort of trusted, when someone like that can be pegged a liar, for whatever reason, with justification, not just randomly, then it suddenly pricks up the ears of the people around those people. Like, hold on, but this this guy is trusted, but yet there's a circumstance where he can be branded a liar. That's slightly unnerving, because he's even disclaiming what a good guy he is. Doesn't think he's a deceitful shit, does he? Yeah, but what if Neil... Oh, yeah. the shit for shit. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Out. Hold on, I'd Neil first, then Rebel. Go ahead, Neil. I, I kind of get your illustration, and I'm falling to the other side now, that he's not, you know, just a liar. But what if Neil laughed, said, it is there, I'm breathing? Hmm? Well, that was the example I did give. Hold on, Neil. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to give an answer. You asked me. Well, I did give that example. Hold hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold that's what I gave in the example, Neil. For Neo to turn around and go, because I'm out of breath. And then Morpheus to turn around and call him a liar. Right? That's the circumstances we're in. But is he a liar when he's literally doing that action? He's breathing in and out. Is that a lie? No. And it isn't for Matthew. For him, well, but we are honest for you. He can't, he still hasn't contemplated the fact that it is flat. He can't contemplate it. We're watching the cognitive dissonance yep. that happens when he tries to contemplate it. Therefore, what comes out of his mouth, the mumbo-jumbo, the lack of recognition of a triangle, are all counter-characteristic to him, especially as a mathematician. But that, again, that wakes people up. That makes them go, why is it that a flat earth is reducing a mathematician that's teaching our kids to the point where he doesn't understand what a triangle is? That shouldn't happen. But his cognitive dissonance is the thing that's hold, is, is holding him back and getting him branded as a scummy liar. Because in the face of co co uh, contradictions, he's still saying, I'll teach the kiddies it anyway. Well, that seems bad. Well, in his mind, no, because it is still a sphere. So is that lies? Again, no, I would say. After the fact, after thinking about it, without the heat of the moment. I want to talk about great analogy. Like, uh, I love the analogy, and it speaks uh, directly to the situation. Like, this, this is the best example you can come up with. But the second, I was going to point out that you're saying not all the teachers are liars. By definition, teachers are liars. And all. And I will expand on that. Teachers must well, follow the curriculum. No, let's, hold let's, on, let's, hold on. let's just Teachers. quiet down. You're going to get rumpus the entire oh, time, Rebel. Hold on, everybody in G+. Can we actually hear it first? Go ahead, Rebel. Okay. By definition, teachers liars. And I'll explain why. Teachers must follow, follow curriculum. If they deviate in any way, shape, or form from a curriculum, They'll face the consequences uh, and, you know, they jeopardize the job security. So they must never question the job curriculum, uh, uh, the, 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 the curriculum, the, the teaching. And so even if they know or suspect the curriculum is incorrect in any shape or form, and most of the case, in most cases, it is incorrect because curriculums are updated yep. not regularly. Not regularly, because if you're looking at the curriculum in any first world country, the degree to which it is updated, comparing to the um, progress, let's say, science and technology has made, it's leaps and bounds. Like the, 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 the degree of separation is enormous because there are teacher unions, there are nameless personnel and think tanks that think something is appropriate to be taught to kids. And they take make those decisions, taking decades, 
literally decades. So anything the teacher's telling you at school as a child is bound to be a lie by the time you're really graduating it, right? Not even, not graduating. At the time teacher's telling you this, most likely it is either a suspect to be the case or is flat out lie. But teachers will never question it because that's exactly what they were told to be taught to kids by the curriculum by the powers that be that imposes rules upon them. By definitions, by definition, and I'll tell you what, through the, throughout the COVID... Hold on, hold on, my hold on, Rebel. Before, hold on, before you expand on it, there was loads of people trying to object at the start and I've stopped them, so if I just let you carry on now, they'll be annoyed. Go ahead, whoever it was that was trying to get in right at the It beginning. was me. Go it, ahead. It, it was me. It, I, I didn't want to, I'm not objecting. I'm, I'm, I'm concurring with Nathan, Rebel, on every side because, but nonetheless, what you did, you're reprimanding him in that harsh way because you've done it over and over again in a general broad announcement, public announcement of your intolerance of this type of um, bad teaching. So this was meant to be, and hopefully it resonated throughout YouTube and any listeners in the community of the heliocentric side, the anti-flat earth side, and the flat earth side. Because enough's enough. It's time to be accountable. We're all adults. We have a future what, with what, children. Right, we have, a, we have children. Oh, well done, D-Rose. I appreciate your sentiment. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, John first. John first. Okay. Well, yeah, I was going to object too, because the analogy you gave was great. But now imagine that Morpheus did that to Neo before he was unplugged. He just walked up to him on the street and beat the crap out of him. And when he was breathing heavy, he looked at him and said, you think that's air you're breathing? That would be more analogous. So I wouldn't. Hello. 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 My God, it's chaos erupts. Hello. Can I just respond to him? It was my example. He's criticizing. Thank you. Can I just respond to John? Thank you. No, because I gave the qualifiers. So in terms of, although I didn't necessarily juxtapose them and now I will, um, it, it's been dragged out of the matrix and had the, the pipe put up his head. Well, metaphorically speaking, that's the equivalent to us telling him, showing him, him having his own words that concede that fact, parity back to him. So in other words, by comparison, you know, at some point when Morpheus says, well, I, I plugged you into the matrix. You, you told me you understood that I was shoving this pipe in you so that the matrix, and then Neo turns around and says, yes, I understand the pipe went in my head, so we are in a simulation. So then Morpheus quotes back Neo's words that he just said. That's more akin to the scenario because this isn't somebody that's not been unplugged. It's somebody that spent years in the arena. The main criticisms I got from the commenters, and these are the people on the circuit, you know who you are. <laughs> they said, no, I've dealt with Matthew Learns. He's had this information over and over again, and in the he'll get, go along to get along with the flat earthers, concede the points, and then just go back straight to square one, contradicting everything he's been told after parroting well, it back I, and conceding it. So it's just like no, chat. Where my analogy then. would um, uh, I Arwen after you know? uh, Adam? Go ahead, Adam. Okay, so we'll, we'll stick with your analogy. They're in they're in the matrix, and they keep doing this and coming out of the matrix and having the stick removed out of the head. Now, it's not the interaction with Morpheus that I'm interested in, but when when Neo comes out of the Matrix, he keeps telling everyone in there, when you're in there, right, and you're trying to kick Morpheus's ass, get a lungful, big, deep breaths, like big, deep breaths, and then you'll fight him. That is what I see. It, you may not, but it, it's untruthful, and it's untruthful to your own knowledge base. It's been repeatedly demonstrated to you. Whether you can grasp it or not, you know it's not a truth what you're speaking. I got gotcha. you. I done before our win goes. So well, I, I, don't, I like that. Arwin. We just reiterate. Uh, yeah, point. Uh, yeah. Like, you can go in a second, now. Mean... Yeah. Uh, in Adam's point, he's saying no. Same analogy that runs concurrent with mine, which is to say, he's been told. He knows he's been plugged in. He knows he's got the stick in his head, and he's on a bed somewhere else when he's doing it. But he's had a meeting with the Merovingian, metaphorical equivalent of anti flat Earth leader or guru, and the Merovingian has told him, "Yeah, get a big lung full of air." Because in this reality, and that's what it is, this is reality, we've got atmosphere. You get a good old suck full of that atmosphere sunshine, on you go. <laughs> right, Adam? Go ahead, Darwin. Yeah. 
Right, yeah, my point is kind of, uh, you moved on now, but my point is that Neo, like, there's Matrix, the first Matrix, is very specifically an awakening process. And when he's there, oh, you think that's air you're breathing? He's already, like, fully converted to trying to get used to this matrix and the knowledge of it, okay? That's not happened with Matthew, just because he admitted, like, oh, yeah, okay, so this is how you think it all works, right? He's just a normie that's been approached by, uh, yeah, by Neo or somebody, uh, what is it? What is his name? Morpheus. And he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of you, but I don't believe you, but I'll hear you out, and I'll even explain back to you what I've learned that how you think. But he's not conceding. With Neo, he, he did. He got out of it. He just forgot. It's like getting used to it. It's like, oh, wait, oh, wait, yeah, I'm not breathing. He just forgot. He, he's used to thinking it's all real, but he's already put his will behind that it isn't real. So he's... Uh trying maybe. to get used to it. It's maybe a very different to, scenario. Maybe, maybe I should have... Hold on, just let me respond to Owen. Maybe I should have used a different character, Owen. Maybe instead I should have put the exact same scenario, but with Cypher being trained, right? Yeah. No. Right. That's no, what no, I no. was going to say. No. That's, that's, he, I, that's what I was going to say, that uh, 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 it, it, you're, you're, you're the wrong character. He's, he's definitely... Uh, Matthew is definitely Cypher. Okay. No, 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 no everyone else stop. No, no, Cypher knows. John next. Cypher Hello. Knows it's John, I want to keep it coherent to today. After please, John. please, John, I want to keep me. it coherent today. John next. Go ahead. Then Arwin. And then, then Brian. Then Brian. And then me. I, I was going to say, it's, we're, we're comparing Dave. it to Neo because Neo was seeking truth. Um, he was seeking Morpheus to get answers, right? Uh, but yes. That is not comparable to Neo. What, what Matthew is. He would be more like the boss who thought he was dictating the rules to, to Neo in the beginning and having Morpheus come up to him, beat the crap out of him and say, do you think that's air you're breathing? Uh, or pointing out the problems in the matrix and saying, you know, there's all these problems with the world around you. That boss isn't going to accept that there's problems. He's he's on top of things. He knows what's going on. He's got good finger on reality. He thinks. Nah, yeah, that's why he's he's still he's still I was. Can I have my turn? It's still, it's still, it's still, it's still, my still, turn. It still stands the test of time. Okay. That's why I said he's definitely. Okay, safe guys, can you, can you keep the color commentary on the matrix to one side? We, we will get you in the queue, though. Both of you, Rebel and D's, coming after Brian. So go ahead, Darwin. Just this keeps happening, and I forget. I, I get lost. I lose my point, and everybody just immediately rolls over it. I, I can't communicate like this, guys. Stop drinking. Sorry, Arvin. I'm not Sorry. drinking. Sorry. My bad. My bad. That couldn't have been a good point. Then. Go ahead. Go ahead, Arwin. My point is, wow. my point was that Matthew is more like an agent. Really, he's just part of the matrix. He didn't want to come out, but. Neo and Morpheus are kind of for some reason getting up to him like and trying to awaken him anyway because it's important. That would be the comparison because he's not willing and the agent in him is just like chat GPT. It reminds me a lot about it. Just rolling out exactly, feeding it back and then just not taking it like a robot. So it's more like an agent than a person awaking from the matrix, Matthew is, in my okay. opinion. You've disappointed me, uh, Arvin. Uh, he's not agent. I don't not even close. Like a, agents are aware of duality, right? Of the matrix, and that's not what I said. You know, okay. everything existing okay. outside okay. of matrix. Okay. There, are, there are maybe a potential agents. He's not okay, the thank agent you. No. Thank you, Brian's he's next. Not the okay, okay. He's I don't want to major on the minors of the analogy with matrix. Thank you. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, um, I'm going to not make. I say I had a bit of matrix. Um, yeah, the other day I pointed out um, his analogy of an ant on the hour hand of a clock is not analogous with uh, someone standing at the equator on a rotating globe out of 3959 uh, statue of mile radius, because uh, that's it's just not analogous. Uh, I, I, as I said, I have bad maths compared to him, bad, really bad maths, uh, poor maths compared to him, and I, even I know that that wouldn't be analogous mathematically. But... He didn't care. He knew no. he, he he knew better. But yeah, he put it out anyway. 
So that's dishonest. No matter what way, there's no way around that for me. That's my two cents. Can I ask? Can I ask something? No, no, no. I was next. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I say it's, it's definitely Cypher. This is the reason why. Because he knows what the triangle is. But yes, he's blissed to understand. He, he says the ignorance is bliss because doesn't, you know, he, he definitely knows that they haven't measured the earth. But yet he goes back to say, yeah, they measured the earth. Right? Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Next. Uh, yeah, next. Uh, are, you des- are you describing Matthew like a glober or like an anti platter? Anti flat earther, absolutely. Well, I, not you, not you. Uh, okay, yeah, you Nathan. Anti, he is an anti flat earther. That's what he is. That mean that mean you behave very good in the in the show, mm-hmm. whatever you say. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> Matthew, Matthew is not that one show. Matthew is one hundred shows, and Matthew, Matthew even came one day later on twenty four seven. Doesn't change anything. Repeating the same story and and being good, you know, because only anti flat, only one anti flat character uh, can be there on twenty four seven at least. Nobody else, only Matthew, because Matthew was I don't know why he was like a, he's good, he's speaking nicely, something like that, and because of that he is there. On any other cases. Any other person was banned because of, of arguments or of, of, of bullshit, of contradictions, of, of double speaking, of whatever, you know. Only Matthew is good. Brian, 99% of people aren't ready to be unplugged, then they'll fight for the system. Exactly. That's what he is. Are we going in order? Are we going in order if we freestyle? Just be impatient. Yeah, I finished. It's definitely going to be a a Matrix theme thumbnail this show. So, teachers versus the Matrix, maybe. Okay, Brian, I want to say nothing. I thought Brian goes next. I'm going to to allude to what Sasha said. Everybody said, but I I guess the first time I spoke, I I guess I was supposed to give my, my, um, my opinion on the Matrix. I'm not too familiar with the characters, but nonetheless, let's go back to the video that I introduced that Eli picked up that brought to the show. Let's think about the knowledge that Matthew has, how he quoted, even had sound bites, even um, mentioned people's names that were flat earth proponents. Let's, let's think about the 24 seven. Let's think about the, let's think about the rides he's had with, with QE. Let's, let's put all that in one big old envelope. And then let's look at how Nathan and him went back and forth and, and Adam and him went back and forth just the other day that we keep playing over and over again. So that comes to the conclusion that this man either has a very deep, psychotic, delusional cognitive dissonance, which is unprecedented in someone, especially with a mathematician expertise, or he is incentivized or compromised in some kind of way, like I said, where you will have to pull him to the side off the off the record and maybe get it out of him that's saying dude I'm just in, I'm doing this because I have to make a living I know what you're saying it's true but look be my family and I'm going to stick to that because no, I don't know the above none I'm of the above you're wrong I agree you're wrong it's you rationalizing how you know a reasonable person would behave and John has said it so many times this isn't a circumstance that we have a precedent set for where you can say how a reasonable man would behave so you can't really tell how you can't j- rationalize it by saying if i took him to one side i'm pretty sure he'd just admit that he's bullshitting and he's just doing it for his well, paycheck it's a good example there if somebody's in the law enforcement or in congress and they've been on both sides they've been in it for 40 something years they've seen the corruption they know what's going on but instead they're looking at their own selfish gains and not stepping down from it. There's no excuse. They no, know. They know this no, corruption. No, no. Stated at the beginning, Nathan. No, Matthew. Matthew um, does it. The no. legal change. Could he redo that? Because I think that's really pertinent. Whereas we'd argued the other day in terms of liars, that we can't prove it. We can't. And that John's great point that that instigated that conversation. And that's always been the case in law, until now, where I think the law recognises that if you can put a 
good case together for that you're ignorant and not a liar, you can get away with something. The standing now, I think, is very applicable to what we're talking about, a qualified mathematician not knowing what a right angle is. I think that's when the law comes in and says, no, any reasonable person would know that. For you and your extra qualification to do that, the law classifies that as a lie now. Well, wait, when you say reasonable, hold on a second, because 99% of the world or the people around us believe it's a sphere. No, no, no. That's that's the wrong yeah. no hold that's on. A step before. Your definition of reasonable, I think, is in question here. Any reasonable person. So that's the court's definition. Any person that's not got a... Tony, could you expand on it? Because you, you'll be better than me in terms of the legal, legal situation. But it's what's is it reasonable that a man with a degree in maths pretends that you can have a curved baseline on a right-angled triangle? That's not reasonable. That's like me. No, that's unreasonable. Asked, can I take a whole bottle of paracetamol, or all of them? And, and I say, yeah. Yeah? It's not reasonable with my qualifications for that response. No reasonable person would think that a person who's qualified but hold on, the reasonable, that response. The reasonable person in, means... The reasonable person means accepted by majority of the society, right? It's, yes. It's, it's a, yeah. yeah, it's it's a consensus yeah, but, reality. So is it, right? is it yeah, reasonable, reasonable to think that a teacher of mathematics could get that wrong, what a right angle triangle is? It's not yeah. reasonable. No yes, person can absolutely less get it educated wrong. Than, than them would think that that is a genuine mistake. No, they can, let's just, they let, can let's have just go. two contradictory thoughts together. Can I please get the sentence out? Guys, <laughs> a reasonable person, as you say, can hold contradictory thoughts together at the same time, which is the definition of cognitive dissonance. When you say reasonable, you're appealing to um, consensus reality. And that's the problem. Yes, majority of people, they will say it is reasonable to have curved triangles. Because they have a conceptual reality in their heads at the living on the ball, and to justify it, they must have that conception of bent triangles and donkey dicks and whatever that is. So when you say reasonable, majority of people will say, "Yeah, it's reasonable." And that's why I disagree with you. About reasonable is not standard. Yeah, but, right. Let's yeah, let's yeah, to geometry. Hold on, Rebels. Question. I had, uh, <clears throat> I had Adam first, then Anthony. Go ahead, Adam. I'll just make that point. I'm not trying to link it to a paradigm shift. I'm linking it to the little specific bit about the functions of a triangle, right? He got that wrong. Why? That's what we're asking. Was it a lie? Yeah, and is and I'll hand it to Tony now. I don't think that's reasonable that somebody who's qualified Objection. in mathematics gets that right. Let, let's address it. No, hang on, let's address it. Let's address it because it is a valid point to ask what is the standard, right? The standard for 40 years used to be known by the Gauche test in England. It used to be the Gauche test, G H O S H, Gauche. And the Gauche test was if the guy held the honest belief that what he was doing was not dishonest, it will not be considered to be dishonest. He's got to satisfy that he didn't think that it was dishonest, okay? Matthew will argue that he doesn't think that it's dishonest to blah, blah, blah. That used to be the standard, but that's not the standard anymore. Genting's Casino changed it, and it's not it's no longer the, the objective standard. It's, the, it's judged by people, normal people, ordinary day-to-day -day people. Is it acceptable that he claims that that was, that was honest or dishonest? Is it acceptable that he claims that? So they judge his standard of subjectiveness not him judging his standard of subjectiveness. So it's an objective mm -hmm. standard to his subjective perception. And that's how it is mm -hmm. now. So we are saying... But is it an right, objective so standard action. or consensus reality? Right? You're talking no, about consensus, consensus reality. reality. Not consensus. It's whether or not our judgment of his standard of his behavior is acceptable. Or well, or that's consensus but, reality. So basically, by definition, isn't it? Say again. Like if if we have a black swan that contradicts all of the um, assumptions and and uh, consensus reality, it must be wrong, right? But what you're saying is the key principle in the judgment is that majority agrees, which is 
no, definition of consensus no, no, reality. No, that's, that's not what I said. I didn't say that. Let me say it again. The old position was that if the guy <laughs> held an honest belief that what he was doing was not dishonest, that would negate the dishonesty test. It was subjective from within the guy. The new position, the current position, is not that he thought that it was honest or not dishonest. The new position is that... Th the, the objective standard, like the person, like us, the ordinary people, judge whether his judgment of honest or not is acceptable. In other words, if someone says red is blue and he honestly holds the position that red is blue, that would get him off the position because he was innocent. He made an innocent mistake. But if somebody objectively says, hang on a minute, I accept that you think that that's uh, red means blue, but red doesn't mean blue. So even though you were being honest at the time, it's it's wrong. And now the standard is judged by his standard is judged by the the ordinary person to see whether or not it's reasonable that he was taking the, the position that he took. So it's now objectively judged. All right. Then. So, so yeah. let me ask you. You're saying objective, and it's not. Let me let me just yeah, respond, can to, respond to this. Well, let's just say, John, and then you can have Rebel. Hold on, let's just get some control again, otherwise it's inaudible. So yes, John, then Rebel, you can respond. Go ahead, John. And me, right. please. You keep saying the ordinary person would judge it to be wrong. Well, and then we want to isolate it to curved triangles like we're not in a flat earth debate forum. I, this is completely inapplicable because if you ask the majority of people, that question, they will say no until you show them how it, it must be a flat plane and you will get the same reaction. So was it reasonable then for him to deny the most basic of geometry in this discussion about flat earth, even though the specific question he gave a false answer to was just simple geometry, for him to then correct himself when pushed on the matter by an art graduate? Yeah. Yeah, let me uh, let me clarify. Mm -hmm. this. Um, the the point will be, uh, what is reason at that point, right? Because if it depends upon what we all ag agree to be reasonable, then no. you know we're no, going to have no, a problem. No, at that point, right? His motivation is key. It's either complete ignorance about what a right angle is. Or there's something else motivating his response. And it's not reasonable that somebody with a degree in maths, particularly when asked for the third or fourth time, gives the correct answer. But for the first three occasions, they don't. Mm -hmm. So, okay. belief so when, wasn't when, one of that. You only Anthony give says, one example. No, so in the court of law, would a reasonable person conclude that he lied those first few times? Or in, for some in, reason, his mathematical knowledge failed him. The it doesn't matter. Debate. Guys, not, none of that matters. Come on, stop. Yeah. Please, stop. Yeah. Objective standard means accepted reality. Objective standard right now, we live on the, on the, on the ball, early it's through space. objective standard. That no, doesn't to mean reality. Hold on, hold on, Rebel. Because it's, unfortunately, it's mathematics that we're dealing with. So in terms of how the language is formed, Curved triangles is the example that Adam's giving, so that it's specific, undisputable, and mathematical in nature. So at that point, when it's indisputable, you've then got your choice without any uh, fuzz around it. Well, is it just his, as Adam put it, his maths failed him in that moment, or is it deceit? You can start assessing it based on these things because of the black and white nature of it being the maths, not physics. Don't take that the wrong way, anybody out there in the audience. Okay, can I, I? Yeah, yeah I, just want, I just want to say. I just want to say. Hold on, hold on, D Rose. I, 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 hold on, D Rose. I know you heard you first, but just Rebel was gathering his thoughts for a second before you you said it. I can tell. Yeah, yes. underline. Go ahead afterwards. Thank you. Underline the assumption is that uh, the outcome of the decision making from the uh, peers of, um, you know, people who are judging you based on objective reality, deciding whether triangle can have a bent lines. Determining the outcome of the decision, whether we live on the ball or flat, they'll be bound to um, consensus reality. So they will, they will, they must accept the reality of bent triangles in order to justify their beliefs. That's why I'm saying it's not up to consensus reality; it's up to scientific facts, ma mathematical, 
mathematically proven scientific facts um, to determine the reality, not the consensus, there's, there's not no the consensus. Room. There's no wiggle room on this. That's why I gave that example. There are other things he said that there's wiggle, but this is this is straightforward geometry. It's a statement. It's an axiom. Okay, so there's well, no argument about it. Yeah, He's but you're dealing with people. Oh, no, no, though, I want right? him to reiterate this. Right? Rebel, Rebel, Rebel. I want him to reiterate this. I've tried to reiterate it. Go ahead, Adam. It's it's a geometric fact that you any reasonable person would expect somebody with a degree in mathematics to be able to answer off the top of the head That's why you take that bloke to the pub quiz for the maths questions right so at this point when pressed three times and he gives an incorrect geometric response which is in contradiction to his knowledge base but then when pushed the first time embarrassed by being told you're getting schooled by an art student he gives the correct answer i, I, I ask how that can be construed as a failure in his maths for the first may, three times being asked. May, may I deal first with the objective Can I go now? Who wants to answer Adam's question so it doesn't just get ignored because someone's got a new point to make? They about the action. failure in the maths? About the failure in the maths? No, about whether it is a failure in the maths or a construct to not admit Something is an alternative reason. Can I, for can I point out that we are using not computers? It's not not computers. Computers. Let somebody else oh. finish talking. Cry Let Brian out. finish and can I answer since I've been waiting? To, um... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but answer it. Which do you think it is? It's the latter because it's not a, it's not, there is no error in the math. The math is what it is. He know, he, he repeated it. It's accurate. It's, it, it's, it's universal. We all know what a triangle and an angle and all that thing. Oh, we know all that stuff. So it's the latter. It's a it's a it's a cognitive um, evasion to try to 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 try to avoid conceding in a in a certain way. But I want to go back to this: ignorance of the law is no excuse. If a police officer is caught with a DUI, he is the most guilty, the most guilty. Not me or you guys who get caught in a DUI, even though we know you're not supposed to drink and drive. However, him being a law enforcement officer, just like Matthew is a mathematician, knowing geometry, being a master teacher with a master degree in it, okay, for a police officer or any law enforcement to be caught DUI, they are more subject of knowing, and they are, they are more of a, of a, of a contradiction and a hypocrisy in the system to, to get away with it or to not be you know, um, uh, found guilty for it, because they're an example. They have no excuse. They're the ones that give out the tickets. So how dare they drive under the influence of alcohol? Same thing with Matthew. Matthew knows them. Matthew's been here. This is not his first rodeo. This is his 174th rodeo, probably. He knows better. That's why I'm saying there is no excuse. I can give excuse for anybody else because I don't know the details of anybody else. But I do know some of the details of this. That's why I brought Matthew into, the, into our arena to scrutinize. I didn't know it was going to envelop to this. but. It, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. And this is just, I hope this resonates so that every... No, no, we got, yeah, hold on, hold on, Dean. Uh, before, okay. before we keep going, your point will get lost. Sorry. Your point is that as, but as a mathematician... It's the latter, Brian. Uh, it's hello, the latter, Brian. Hello. As a mathematician, you're right. It's, it's the standard in terms of when he starts getting things wrong with basic triangles. The standard's a lot higher. The accountability, therefore, is also higher. And I agree with you, you're comparing it to a police officer in terms of them being drunk driving. Yeah, getting a triangle wrong for a mathematician. It's a different standard. Would you agree, Adam? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, and, and, and like yeah, they were well, saying, uh, please uh, say uh, elbow. Hold sorry. on. I, I thought he said elbow. Sorry. We said Adam. I did, but it's Boy, okay. Adam's voice has changed. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, and he's like, he's been in here, right? Not here, but different arenas. And, 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 this point has been brought to him. And he knows about this triangle, so for him to say that is just, just, just inten inten intentionally being dishonest. Yeah, because okay, he well, knows he's not going to get prosecuted like by the same the standards day, right? ordinary people will be prosecuted by, because he knows he's a police yeah. officer. That's the problem. I, I hold on a sec. If we're going to apply this standard to him, right? We're going to apply this standard, right? Where 
if normal people can uh, say that it's unreasonable, right? Now we're going to hold this standard to ourselves at this moment and say, ordinary people know it's a sphere and you believe it's flat. Are you a liar? That's consensus of reality, right? Repeat that again. I heard the word black. No, no, repeat that that again. Let me really try. Everyone, stop. Everyone, stop. I would like to hear. uh, Yeah. Number one, let's just agree because he did get through the cracks, which is Rebel saying, and he was fighting for it earlier. No, I don't agree with your points because you're talking about consensus reality. Now, you're applying the standard of consensus reality and obviously Rebel's objected. So let's just get that on the record. And then, Adam, go ahead. (laughs) We're moving the analogy, the the point that we're holding him to, to make our other people, to make the point that he's not lying. If we could just focus on the geometry, the specific geometry bit, and stipulate how that's not lying. There may be points in the discussion where we could say he's not lying. But I think we've identified one that needs resolving that is very difficult to say he's not lying. Right, but the thing is, this discussion isn't happening in a vacuum. The, the, uh, he's in a flat earth debate forum. No, it's not, that's why he's expecting. There's not a speed. That's why he's right. So, what I hear you saying, John, can we is it? the reason he's not, he's not using he's just hold on, Rebel. Hold on. knowledge. Hello, somebody's having a discussion here. The, the reason that um, I've lost my train of thought now. Um, what you're saying is the reason he's not lying, yeah, the reason he's failure of mathematical knowledge is because he's struggling with the implications of that when he applies it to a ball earth. That's not That's relevant right. to the geometrical question that he's not answered truthfully. However much of a struggle that is for him cognitively, yeah, the point I'm being I'm holding him to is what's the requirement for an angle? Okay. The rest of it, the situation where the discussion is taking place is irrelevant to whether that statement he makes is truthful or not. And you seem to be actually proving my point by saying the reason he has to respond like that is because of his cognitive pain. Yeah, but that doesn't make him a liar. With that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley promo and streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, though, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. So another massive thank you to all of you. Smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, joined as a member. And of course, today's Discord and G Plus panels for making the show possible. Stay tuned if you're watching on an after show. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Not ready to accept the truth. Well, yeah, I don't know much about Matthew, but, but the way I perceive him is he's not anti flat earther. He's a glober. No, no, you're incorrect. I will deal with Matthew for a really long time in different arenas. Oh, okay. He's definitely yeah, anti flat earther. I don't know the history. Okay, I don't know the history. I might be wrong. I totally, I totally this, accept This that. dude is definitely a cipher. Like he knows the, right? he know, he's, he's seen. The outside, he knows what it is. He knows all the arguments. He actually, and then he's like, "Yeah, no, I'm, I'm ignorance is bliss." I, 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 I decided to believe the experts. That's what I said. No, he didn't decide. I, no, 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 no. This is. No, I'm telling you what he actually says. This is what he's. This is. I'm not saying. This is. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm not talking to you, Neil. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, not talking, I'm talking about what he just said. No, I don't think he said. No, this is what he actually says. But uh, go ahead. Okay, and I didn't know. Thank you for uh, bringing it up. I didn't. 
uh, I didn't know there were more interactions with Matthew, the math teacher, uh, before the show that I've actually heard. Of course. So you if there were more interactions. Times. Jeez, uh, Adam, I've skipped a lot of well, shows then. <laughs> it doesn't matter though whether he uh, whether he uh, interacted with people or not prior to the show. Because Adam, I'm going to ask him a question now. If he's available there, I don't know if he's working or whatever. I'm about. Yeah, Adam, if you go back nine years ago, ten years ago, when you still were a Glober, where you just, you know, like everyone else, you believed it was a globe. And as a mathematician, if you were asked to ma mathematically give an analogy uh, for uh, what someone going around the equator on a globe earth would be like. Mathematically, could you come up with an ant on an hour hand of a clock? No, it's... What's interesting that is, for someone that's been around the block, if you look at some of Betty's slides, you got a little baby QE build with building blocks with like the black swan and stuff. And on the other side is a house of cards falling down. It's such an old one, this, for anyone that's been in this arena. It's a misnomer, a, a, a cheat. And it's got on there RPM versus speed. Yeah, that's, that's a dishonest thing. But even when I was a baller, if you asked me what, what the construct of an angle was, which is more pertinent, I'm only going to answer honestly. I can't, how can you lie about what an angle is at, the, at that level? It's, it's, it's beyond basic, isn't it? It's such a yeah. basic question that you instantly answer, that you've got to ask yourself good why one, somebody wouldn't instantly answer. It's almost like propaganda. One, really. what's, what's the first letter of the alphabet? You just thought, it's almost oh, so oh, B. Do you see what I mean? Now, why? Why you have to pause, just like you did there, to be flippant, you have to pause and you have to think of something to say. Correct. And that's what's happening. It's almost so basic that, like, the scientific method, that there's no way that the upper echelons of society, the people that decide what that, studies that, are, that, right, could get that wrong, right? No, it's the complete opposite. You can have the excuse, can't you, that as you go through, and we, we say it, you move on from the scientific method, and half of you forget it, myself included, it's nuances, right? But this isn't that. This is what makes up an angle, yeah? Just as basic as what is the first letter of the alphabet. This is nothing that requires you to recite a paragraph of text, yeah? This is a most fundamental axiom of geometry. I yeah, agree. Brian laid and it, you know Brian what? But, nice. Hold on. But hold on. We're, Matthew has had a seed planted in his head that he did not want that. Now let's just see what happens. Because the, from the time that he comprehended uh, to the time that he conceded to the time that he realizes the implications are not the same thing. So I'm, I'm just curious to see what happens to him in the future. Yeah, what he I, reverts I back. He, he, he does. He does this. Unfortunately, this is, unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, it's this. I introduced him to this conversation. I came back to you guys, and I gave you the clip that Chocolate now has, where you hear him saying, "Well, when when he's asked, how do you get an angle off a curved adjacent?" And he says, you can't. I don't know how you would do that on a globe. So he's already reckoned with it. And now he's chosen to be in this position. He's fallen backwards. You don't do that by mistake. Hello. So he's a liar. So yeah. it's not the first time he's encountered that, Eli, is what you're saying. He's protecting like himself from saying, the answer is A. A is the first letter of the alphabet. Yeah. I have to say, you have to learn how Matthew works. If, if you go into his uh, YouTube channel, then you see he's a play in a, he's an actor, and he is trying to be funny in, in front of his students. And he, and the students say, oh, you're so good. You're so good. You have to be a, in a movie or something. So you have to understand, if you look through his material that he is bringing in front and what he is doing in, in, in 
for his students. He's trying to be funny and uh, popular, and it's like he doesn't know really what what he is doing. It's more about something else that he should be doing. So if you think about that, there's something wrong with him. Uh, and uh, about the ninety degrees, uh, he was not able to understand that. Um, Nathan Oakley said that five or six or seven times, and he he was not taking that in. That's a big problem. Why? What's the question in there? He's a liar. He's he seems he's a liar. Like a oh. lies. And if he's just making errors, conceding them, and then just making them again, going the whole route again of reasoning, then that's what Rumpus used to do all the time. I mean, that is that is effectively lying. We still talking about um, Matthew? Yes, we are talking about Matthew. Oh, okay, Matthew, Matthew, well, Matthew. then it's almost like the Ron Paul and the doctor who stood on the stands and kept lying. We know we know you're lying, but sometimes people are not going to concede, even though they may see things implicit that exposes them as fabricating or omitting the truth. It's a technique. But at the end of the day, like Neil said, and I'll stand on it, He's a liar. Period. Yeah, it's a bit like I, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, I smoked yeah, weed, but I, but I smoked weed, but I didn't inhale. Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe he's just stupid. Maybe he's just stupid. Uh, he's he's just retarded, trying like to be said. popular. I don't like know. Like QE said. QE said he's okay. retarded. That's what QE said. That's another alternative. He's retarded. It, it might be so. Yeah, but it, maybe QE, it's not a liar. QE doesn't think. Just retarded. Sorry, wait, just one second. QE doesn't think in the way that someone like Matthew would think. QE is like, if he can't answer that, he's stupid. That's QE's attitude. Because QE deals with, like, it's either this or that. Like, QE is just not... Don't, QE doesn't think in the way of, it's my, this is my time to tell a little lie. That's not the way he works mentally. So for him, he just... That's not how he thinks. So QE would call someone stupid when, they're, when someone else would call them a liar. Do you know that kind of way? Even though, because it's the same outcome for, it's kind of the same outcome, because there's someone might be saying something that someone stupid would say, but it's also the same thing someone who's a lawyer would say under, in the, under the same circumstances. You know yeah. what I mean? So we can call him, a re, call him whatever, or stupid or whatever, but that doesn't mean he's not a lawyer instead of being stupid. Exactly. <laughs> But we are trying to find out the reason why he is acting like that. We, we are just trying to understand what is behind it. So, can, can you mute when you're not talking, Johnny? Thank you. Okay. And and back and oh, back and back to the red and blue. Back to the red and blue color example somebody gave. I forgot. I'm, I'll give you credit for it. You know who you are. If you have a painter that you hire to paint your house, and you guys go over to invoice, and you go and you you know you tell them. On the invoice, what paint you got? You want it to be painted blue, and he comes, and he's supposed to be a, a a certified, twenty-five years in the business painter company, and been doing this for you know commercial and residence. And he comes back to your house with red paint, and you come to work in your house, the, the room is red. There is no excuse. He just wanted to do what he wanted to do, and then you ask him, then you ask him, why did you paint my room red? Because you told me to. And the invoice says right there, plain as day, that it was blue. You know we had the discussion. You got the discussion on recording. I mean, sometimes you just have to take accountability. Whether you want to or not, we're going to hold you accountable. Matthew Weathers, then, you are a liar. And yeah, then I didn't know that Matthew was on the show about prior. It's blue as well. Come on, John. Look at I'll say that again. John, look, John, look at your own example. You, what you say, John? He doesn't hours, know what blue and red yeah, is. Call, hold on, let me finish. Once you realize that there was no measurement, it came around. That was after abusing people like freaking the Morgyle, stuff like that. You come to the truth. There's no excuse for that. You've been in the arena well, three see, years. See, the standards that we keep holding up bother me. That's the only thing. Because I, I've not heard an objective way to know. And all I've heard is subjective, like, I'm not, I don't want to be judged by the standards we're judging him by. 
Why? But th that is the standards, though. It's been changed recently. Exactly. Are you saying that there yeah. should be some other standard? Let's use the standard that you're wanting to use, right? Everyone knows it's a globe, and you believe it's flat. Are you a liar? That's not the standard that I said. You keep misrepresenting repeat what it. I said. Repeat it. Don't say okay. the old standard. Just say the new one. Right. The new one is, the current one is, if the guy, whatever his position is, is deemed to be dishonest by other people, even if his own perception is that it's honest, if other people deem his perception to be dishonest, it will be dishonest. Yeah. Yeah. You better think about that before you start holding people to it, because that is not a good standard. Doesn't matter whether it's right. good or not. That is the standard. Oh, that's oh, that's the standard of percentage reality. Right, John. You're right, John. Nice, that's nice. Please, let me, let me, let me put the word. Let me put the word. I agree. This is the standard of consensus reality. The key word is most people, right? If one of them mathematically, you know, scientifically proves the consensus wrong, they, they're not going to be, um, that's not going to be the standard. The standard is consensus in reality. For as long as most people, quote unquote, reasonably think, whatever their reasons are, you know, we can't define their thinking, their motivations. So that's, although it, I can consent to that it is a recent or most modern standard, it's not, quote unquote, reasonable standard. Okay, well here you go, Warrior. What if the what if the standard standard is constructed by the powers that be who give a corrupt standard like the pseudoscience heliocentric standard, and let's say the consensus, which is the majority of the Earth population, believe the standard that it's a globe, like the example that John gave and said to be careful because of this new standard that they have, and then we have the few that say no, it's not, even though we know scientifically with true science that it's not. But being that the standard is not real science, it's pseudoscience, which they are purporting now, then what? That means that truth means nothing because it's all about the standard of whatever the consensus belief belief is, exactly. not the reality. Yeah, that's a false equivalence fallacy. That's a false equivalence fallacy. You're comparing somebody's worldview that has major implications on many different fronts to whether somebody knows what an angle is that something that's objective. So that's a false equivalence fallacy. Why are you guys still arguing about this? He's an overall retard, but he definitely Chewy, lied. why are you thing. always shooting my shit out the sky? You're like I an RP missile. Don't take it personally. Every time, everybody. It wasn't D-Rose. It wasn't the D-Rose. It was the John. Oh, thank you. That's a false thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Well, I would agree with you that he's retarded before I would agree he's a liar. He's overall he's retarded. But in well, that specific yeah. instance, he's overall retarded because I've dealt with him on many occasions. Yes. But in this particular instance, hyperspecificity about the angle, that's a different game now. That's a whole different scenario. Follow? Right. Yeah. And the standard, the standard that was brought forward was brought forward by Anthony to decide that he was a liar. And I just applied that standard to the, the worldview. Yeah, it's a false the, equivalent. Oh, it's no, not but, but, but no, his, 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 standard, his standard was uh, to appeal to consensus policy anyway. Like, I mean, we just have to call that for what it is. Um, but but the key thing is, I, what people's worldviews are subjective to many different avenues, for the lack of a better term. Do I have to say this again? An angle is an angle. And he's an he's supposedly an expert in mathematics. It's a false equivalence mm -hmm. fallacy between well, objective and yeah. objective. So then the shape of the, the earth has nothing to do with the worldview. Yeah, it okay, does. Can you expand on can you expand on false equivalence fallacy? Yeah, question? I just did. I'm not gonna do it again. Well, and for the record, the thing. and for the record, and for the record, any type of slow down syndrome, you know, people that say we shouldn't use the term retard. You know, I understand that for the listeners. However, I do know people with Down syndrome, a.k.a. retards and town idiots even, that are considered like, oh, don't worry about Billy. Billy does that, which I grew up with. They are capable of lying. OK, they do lie. They're not innocent. So QE's right. You can be retarded or a town idiot or stupid 
or a, a, a moronic imbecile and still lie. So let's put Matthew Weathers in that suit. That's what he is. But that's not Isn't that's not what he's saying. Hang on, hang on. That's not what he's saying. Hang on. That's not what QE is saying. QE is saying what Adam is saying and what I'm saying. Him in his profession, at his level, in that profession, could not get those questions wrong. In the story. You just couldn't. You're like, there's no way you could get those wrong and hold that position he holds. Can't be done. That's I agree. I agree one so thousand percent. That, that, I agree one thousand percent. That is objective as it's going to get. Yeah, I agree one thousand percent. I'm just giving the benefit of the doubt for the sides of he's either a liar or he's slow. But like you said, he can't be slow yeah, and hold that title. It doesn't title. matter whether he's smart or, or he's smart or slow. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether he's smart or slow. That has nothing to do with it. What matters is that he's a he's a PhD level mathematician in the university in the US, not some. BS University, even a, a proper one in the US, and he's uh, he's getting angles wrong. No, that doesn't happen in the story. It's because Which, his subjective worldview doesn't comport with objective reality. Is why he's getting this shit wrong. John Mafratnikovich, can I just ask you what do you think is a liar? If the if you take issue with what was what I cited to you was the, the standard of measuring dishonesty, what do you think is a lie? If it's what is a liar? Well, you know, in a normal situation, I think that would be fine. But this is anything but normal. There's nothing analogous you can compare it to. Like it, it is a false equivalence to hold anything else up to it. I don't think so. But what what do you think is a liar? Tell me what hold you on, think you is a lie. You asked two different ah. questions. Hold on, just one sec. Just one sec. Uh, asked, hold on. You asked what is a lie. Uh, Hello, whoever's talking. Johnny B, can you put yourself on mute, please? Uh, okay. You asked what is a lie. So when we say teachers are teaching a lie, that's different to saying what is a liar. But they're two different questions. I just wanted to clarify which one you're asking. I did ask both, and he okay. can answer either. I think that either answer would be sufficient. What does refracted curvature think is a either a lie or a liar? Tell me. I think the legal definition does it well enough for almost everything. But the false can, can false I ask you this? So My answer is: if you know why you are lying, then uh, that is a lie. If you don't know why you are lying, then uh, it's uh, because you don't. Uh, I'm That's right. You can be well, truthful, I, teaching lie because you believe it is the truth. Here's hyper right, here, here's hyper specificity say, for a liar. Hyper specificity for a liar, like the way QB like hyper specificity is this. A liar is somebody that knows the A's, the B's, the C's, and everything about it, but continues to express the contrary, which is the he's lie. Guilty. Then he's guilty. Okay, then? that's right. all to it. I don't care what level. Honey, did you eat the ice cream? The example somebody gave him. No, mommy, and it's vanilla ice cream all over their mouth. As innocent as it yeah. is, and doesn't hurt humanity, and it doesn't make the house go on, set on fire, still the child lied because the child knew that he ate. The motive for why he lied, yeah. that's irrelevant. Who cares why Matthew's no, I, lying? I, I the fact of the matter that. is, he's what? lying. He's lying I agree. because he knows. I agree, but I still want refracted curvature to answer the question. If he's not happy with the standard of detecting a lie, then what is the standard that he would apply against the teacher? And I keep, I keep telling you guys, I don't know. I'd love to hear one. I would. But every standard I've heard, is, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a good one. Not for this. There's nothing I can compare it to to... to get a, a good bearing like it's, they may just be that philosophically uh unmature i, I don't know i don't know why they're doing it they're well, just they the, the why, question why, why, that i asked why, was, why is it is the, the question respectfully john the question remember, i asked you was what remember. would you say is a lie or a liar and the answer is i don't know so in the absence of an alternative, it has to be the case that there's got to be a judgment of some kind because these teachers are telling lies. But if there's no alternative to measure it, then we have to accept the current position because you haven't got an alternative. And it's not about why. It's not about why. So John, I, if it's I not don't about the motive place why. it, I can't say it's not good enough? Is that it? Is that Correct. really what you want to give as a response? 
Correct. But I right, leave with a notion the that you are a liar whether you know it or not. That's and basically not the principle. And we don't care about why you lied. You lied. That's the fact. Yeah. You lied. Yeah. Whether you Twice know it or not, for that's the principle. Me. You are a liar whether we're you know it or not. Standards now. I agree with that. Replace the gold globe model. Don't personalize it. He did lie. It's not my standards. It's the standard you're pushing. You just said if I can't replace it, then we have to use it. No, right? it's not. Let's not personalize it. It comes from a change in the legal position from the Gentings Casino case, which said if the guy thinks that he's being honest, but the standard is 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 judged by others to not be honest, then it will be deemed as dishonest. That's not my standard. Let's not personalize it, please. Well, no, no, no we get it. We get it. Personalize it. When you say if I can't replace it with something, then we have to keep it. Well, I, I, well, well the you don't you're talking, you're trying that, to get a word yeah, in some, while they're having the discussion, and it's just making it inaudible. You've just got to wait for a natural gap rather than trying to muscle your way through their conversation. Thank you. I would say hey, he can be honest, but uh, say wrong thing. That's not a lie. He's just, he is honest, but he is just telling a lie. But he's no. honest because he doesn't know better. He knows better. He's got a master's PhD in mathematics. Yes, that is not a question. That is not a question. I understand that, but that's the definition of uh, difference. Now we know he has to know because he has the education. He has to know better. Therefore, he has to take the judgment as a liar. I'm just sympathetic to him. You all come to it a lot quicker than I did. I'm sympathetic. I can't help it. I, I just don't accept that standard. Yeah, but feelings don't, feelings don't count. Did the man lie, yes or no? Anthony. Yeah, he lied. Well, I think, I think okay, let, let me clarify. Well, well, let me say that I was clarifying for Anthony because I didn't like the way it sounded because I, I didn't hear a clarification on the position. You just said there's a set standard. But now I think I understand because if you go through university, Okay, and and you major in mathematics, then there's a certain set of information that you must understand to get that certification. That that that's the standard we're talking about. Something that's objective. So well, it seems going that beyond the, that, arguing... so going beyond that to know that he's went through this system, where we would say, okay, understood, because we've had that education here as well it's just an education we know he got the same one then there's a problem with what he's doing here today with us today but you could right, use so the same argument to we say there's doing... a problem with what we're doing how so what look the rest of the world right because you're when you're dealing in law you're going to be dealing with a lot of belief they believe that they know it's a globe. They believe You're that. Again. You're doing it again. False, false equivalence. equivalence fallacy. It's it won't be a false equivalence in law because they believe they know that. Yes, it will. Can you objectively pu prove your worldview? And secondly, can you objectively prove a triangle? Go on. Hold on a sec. Because yeah, you're not seeing what I'm saying. These oh, people yeah, believe am. that when you're going to be judged by that, right? And you want to set a standard to say that that's how you should be judged. God help us if they ever start holding us to that standard because they are ignorant. I have no idea with what you speak of. Compare the worldview, the constituents that make up a worldview, and then compare it or juxtapose it with an objective triangle. That's what you're... They think they're. They think that the Earth is measured by objective triangles, right? What does that have to do with my question? Well, because uh, let me answer. Because at that point, when it's being measured with objective triangles, but the world is still a sphere, there's a cognitive dissonance that is unprecedented that we can't just label lies. That's the whole point. And guess what? Yeah, but legally speaking. Uh, you don't have to prove intent, right? whether you know you're lying or don't, whether you know you're committing a crime or don't. 
the legal standard, I, to Anthony's point, is that if you have lied, whether intentionally or not, you are considered to be a liar, and intent is a secondary. It's not important okay. to the verdict. Uh, well, Let's if I could just jump in for, but like right after, right after um, uh, uh, Nathan's point, actually, I mean, however, even though he would experience cognitive dissonance, we all understand and we have all explained, told him he has accepted and received that there's a difference between measure, an, an angular measurement or physical elevation angle measurement and something like spherical triangles. He, he understands that there's a difference. He's accepted it and he's still doing the same thing. So it, there's a difference between this, this mathematical thing that you can do and when we're specifically saying, what about a physical measurement though? Okay, how about this? At the point that the policeman says, no, no, it is actually a, a crime to walk across this bit of land for X, Y, Z reason. Now you've been told on your way, you come back the next day and the guy's walking across the exact same bit of land. What's the policeman going to do? And when the policeman says, look, I explained to you that you can't walk across here. Yeah, but I believe I can. And I am, look, I'm, look, I'm literally doing it. Well, that guy's going to still go in cuffs, isn't he? Even though he believes he's yep. in the right and he can do it and Lee is doing it. And But for the fact the policeman yep. was there, he'd be doing it without any problem. Uh -huh. And if this thing went to court, we all know whether we want to claim it or not on this panel. But there is documentation that I have screenshots of that that Taboo has, that Eddie has, that that uh, Talib has of NASA and military all armed forces stating stationary, stationary flat plane as their assumption of the earth. So let's go back uh, to the on, science. Please. That's not what let's we're go, discussing. We're, no, just, we're just discussing. No, 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 I'm saying. I know, I'm, but we're just I'm discussing sorry, the guy's not, malice. You know, it's, right. No, I understand it, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to give a foundation. The foundation of this is that Matthew's denying and teaching the children that the earth is a globe. So we're, we're, we're giving scenarios of judgment. And, and legal legalities as far as how he's protected because of his, his cognitive dissonance or ignorance of the law or whatever, whatever. So if this thing went to court, and let's say the standard is that the, that the consensus majority, dem democratically, with democracy says, well, he didn't mean, he didn't know any better. And then we base on that his knowledge of, of the mathematics, of the geometry, which breaks down the knowledge of knowing what a level is and what a baseline is and what celestial navigation with a triangle and all this stuff. You put that all into the same picture as evidence and you are the prosecutor, prosecutory side and you're saying, look, and, 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 and the powers that be even have documents that state that they even admit this, even though they publicly push this propaganda about this, you know, this spherical floating earth, they still, to cover their behind and because of their official documents, they have it on paper that they have knowledge of it. There is no escape from it. And I know Matthew has seen these presented in different videos. And again, Matthew made a video that actually has the people like Eric DeBay to Chocolate to QE bringing up these things. He criticizes everybody who has brought this evidence. So he has no, I'm back to it, he has no excuse for what he is doing. Yeah. No, well, I, I just, no, just, just want yeah, to oh. make one point off the back of that and then you go, Brian. Which is to say that I watch a lot of court TV and such. And it's very rare, if ever, that you'll see a, a criminal turn around to the judge and say, when asked to justify their actions, I knew it was wrong and I did it anyway. In other words, there's always some mitigating evidence that they want to provide to give a justification for what they did. And for most people who have done something wrong or criminal, at the point that they're doing it, at some level they recognise that it's wrong most people beyond the age of about 10 recognise the difference between right and wrong. But people still do wrong stuff anyway. Now, it's only at the point of judgement that they maybe see remorse or see the error in their ways because of the potential consequences. Now, we can play kangaroo court and judge and jury, but ultimately our conviction of him morally means nothing to him because there's no consequences. Now, we don't know his motivation in terms of his salary if we postulate it earlier but we don't know it's only upon the point of judgment that you can say well you're going to have some consequences now do you now feel remorse 
Normally, even then, the, the same exact example with a criminal who wouldn't say, I knew it was wrong, I did it anyway. Their remorse is only self-inflection or self-pity because uh -huh. they've got caught, because they're going to have to deal with the punishment. But they just still did mm -hmm. it anyway at the time. Matthew's no different. He knows it's wrong. He's doing it anyway. Will he turn around yeah. and say, I know it's wrong. I'm still going to teach the kiddies anyway. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. he pretty much did say that. I've got yes. a journal paper from it's from the European Journal of Psychology. Which is, I was just reading up for Cog this, but there's a, an interesting study that was done. Um, and it's basically getting people to either plan to tell a lie, but not telling it, or tell lies, basically. Um, and I'll just, just read the, the results. Results show that telling a lie plays a more important role in inflating belief scores than simply just preparing a script for the lie. Cognitive dissonance may lead to motivated forgetting of information that does not align with the lie. This research suggests that telling lies may lead to confusion as to the veracity of the lie, leading, in, leading to inflated belief scores. So you, by going out there, you start to believe, and lie, even though you know you're lying, you believe it more, is what this seems to be saying. That would be a reason. You often wonder why the ballers come out here. Psychological papers suggest that's why it's to reinforce their lie. Well, I, I think what's going on here, how I view this, is just people on the panel are trying to replace lying with cognitive dissonance. Both exist, and sometimes both can exist within the same person, which can't replace lying with cognitive dissonance when it's obviously not cognitive dissonance. Thank you. Cognitive dissonance well, like I mean, itself. Fundamentally, well, it that, is. that's you, the at process. That point it is, Adam, yeah. Yeah. You're lying to yourself. But uh, let, let's just go ahead and say that I think there's a lot of people on this panel that are just oh. wanting to judge somebody. Well, yeah, oh, yeah I want to burn him. Burn him. So, yeah, so, 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 so Adam, 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 Adam oh, you are yeah. saying it is a psychological problem that we are we are talking about. No, I, it's I, about saying, I found that. I got, I got a question. Can I, can I, can I ask? Can, you, can you all hear? Let's, look, try to open your ears. All you're doing is inwardly processing what you're going to say next. And then when there's a mild gap, you open your mic and blurt out. You're not listening to the conversation as it flows. Adam's just been asked a question by Johnny B, who's patiently done as I've asked and waited for a gap. Got a question in. Adam started responding. But none of you are actually listening to the conversation that's taking place, really. Go ahead, Johnny B. Repeat your question. Hopefully, Adam will give you an answer. So, Adam, you are saying it is in the ground, uh, the ground of this problem that we are talking about is about psychology and psychology's problem that we have to take in, or do we really have to take it in? What is your take on that, Adam? I didn't understand what you said there. Can you just it, it, it is what? a psychology problem that we are talking about. It's a psychology. Well, Right. So, yeah. I mean, cognitive. Remember that cognitive dissonance isn't real. It's a term that psychologists use to coin. Yeah. It's not actually a real thing. Nothing in psychology is. It's just made up analogies. Not really what's happening. You ultimately think about what happens with cognitive. You're lying to yourself. You're just convincing. You're denying the knowledge you have. What What this is saying so, here is in terms of that psychology paper. And that's the only link to psychology I'm making, that somebody's done a psychology study with, with cognitive dissonance in mind. Um, so even though they know what they're saying isn't true, when they actualize the lie, instead of just writing the lie down, the lie becomes more believable to the person taking part in the lie. And the um, scorers, they believe what's being told to them more. So uh, and, that's uh, all I'm saying there, okay. but that's, that is okay. that's I'd how like to address that. you can reinforce uh, it. Uh, okay. He's nearly there. He's nearly there. Bloody hellfire. Close. Well, oh, fire. Try again, Adam. Sorry. So that's all, all, that, all that research seems to be saying is it's, it's postulating a motivation for why you would go out and continue lying because it strengthens your belief. It allows you to believe more in the lie, if you go out and verbalize. Can I address that? Can I 
Also, I, I, I will ask uh, Adam, then you can take uh, take over. The, the first follow up question there is about a crop uh, trick, uh, tricking uh, uh, a press from the crop. You are in in the, the chamber, and and uh, if if you are in this chamber, uh, therefore you believe in this because you are part of something. That is a psychology also. It's a you are part of something, and you have to hold you inside uh, inside the group group group. That is part of the psychology you're talking about. Uh, the group of people that have some view of the world and understanding yeah. of the world. Well, so, look, psychology Can is not, that? not real. It is real, but it's not legal, really, a lot of it. And it's not scientifically proven. It's descriptions. It's, it's like a language, a description of behavior patterns, right? And then uh, they might link some kind of a cause within it but I don't buy to that. But it is still description of patterns that are recognized and described, right? And that is real. Just say. Okay. C can I address that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> what you're saying is you're making a distinction, or you're you're basically saying that there's a distinction between lying and a cognitive dissonance. Um. The thing is, um, if you don't have knowledge, then which one do you have? So there's a question of whether do you do you really have the knowledge to make it a lie, or is it cognitive dissonance because you do not have the knowledge to make the distinction? So what well, I'm, I'm saying is, is, it, is, is, is let, me, let me let me let me let me let me come back to that. So basically, we, 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 you refer to the title that these guys have. So if they have no, a it's gonna let you. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. No one's going to let you. I'm so what, Johnny? You can't make that statement like that when yeah. when that so when it, so, it, it so, destroys but, your own case. You said. Did he have the knowledge? No. And the crux of there this matter of, of why we're discussing it is whether yes, or so not I'm coming to that. Can I can I finish? It? I'm coming to that. Oh, no, okay. You, you okay. So been. if you have let Adam respond. The, the, the okay. crux of the argument, as you've outlined there, is the person does the person have the knowledge? And at this point, the case we're examining is does a person with a degree in mathematics know that you need two straight lines for an angle? Yes, I'm think... coming to that exact point. Okay? So now they have the degree, but you have to look at how did they get the degree? Anybody? No, I, I think all of us here have a degree. So nah. the way you get a degree is you answer what is being asked from you. Anyone, anyone who's being in a university right. do, do knows that they degree, want you to answer specifically. Sorry? This is beyond retarded what you're post what you're mitigating for him. This is not a complex, please resolve this equation. It's what constitutes an angle to a person with a math degree. As we said earlier, somebody's got an English degree, and we say, What's the first letter of the yeah. alphabet? Only a retard, <laughs> yeah, or, or, or a disingenuous liar would give something over the name, wouldn't they? Because it's not reasonable to pretend. Now you can mitigate and say he might have got his degree on the back of a corn a cornflakes box, yeah, or whatever. Get real. This is not anything that somebody of six years old, you would all say, would be reasonable for them to know as well. You can't mitigate the like only that. reasonable excuse is I, somebody that did not take geometry, somebody that didn't graduate at the second grade and just worked on the farm. Those are the people that you can impose no accountability to their ignorance, to them inadvertently telling a lie. But Matthew has no excuse. And John, I want to ask you a question. If you had a daycare person somebody. that was watching your grant, if you had a if you had if you had a daycare center, okay, trained, licensed teachers and everything in a daycare center, okay, and you had your grandchildren there, and an adult violated your grandchild, and then your child, your grandchild told you what happened, it's caught on camera. This person has read the protocols and regulations, he knows the law, and he lies or says, Oh, I didn't know I was doing anything wrong because in the Bible, they said that he, you know, not to throw that, but I'm saying they said people used to have girlfriends and marry women at, at the age of 12 before, blah, 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 blah. 
you're going to let that slide? No, you would be judgmental. Whether you would allow the judge to put that person yeah. in jail for pedophilia, yeah. okay? But I would be then, happy then, to be, then, then, hold on a damn. Then that's man. not a, that's not So let's judge. Everyone, calm down. We can judge Matthew. Hold on, everyone, calm down. Stop, 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 stop. Finish. Finish. We can judge Matthew. We can judge Matthew on this. We got it's not your point. like we're we saying. Got your oh, point. Oh, D, please stop saying the same thing five times. Right. We got the point. But you've got a, a strong objection from John, and I hope he wants to carry on objecting. Go ahead, John. I would be happy to be held to that standard of calling him a liar, right? But the, we're talking about a worldview. We're not talking about my kids getting messed with. Don't make it personal. Please, that's disgusting. Yeah, right, maybe. We're not talking about a okay, worldview. Okay, I, I, I apologize about for that. Angle. I was trying to, get, I was trying to hit you in the head with the hardest angle. thing to make you understand. All right, guys. Would, would you please stop going off? Hang on. One second. Would you please stop going off into other analogies? We don't yeah. need other analogies. We We've don't really need for them. We have facts. Sorry, right, I've guys. Got, no, I've got an angle. Spot right. uh, on. Uh, and that's uh, what uh, we've hold got on. to Let's stick just with. Get some order. We've got uh, we'll a have, Hello. Hello. We'll have Adam, then... Uh, was that you, Anthony? Yeah, yeah. Adam, then Anthony. Go ahead. We've, we've got statements of fact from the person. We don't need analogies. These, uh, any analogy is confusing... Yeah, and not dealing with the point. We have got his statement. We've got his qualifications. Now, John likes to appeal to, you can't speak to his motivation. I'm happy with that. But in not being able to call him a liar, I can also not mitigate for him just being stupid. So the only thing we can deal with is the facts, his qualifications and the dumbness, yeah, the complete dumbness of the response for somebody with those qualifications. They're the facts. That we need to assess. Amen. Refractor curvature, I've got a question for you. John QE normally says the phrase, don't ascribe to malice that which can be um, explained with um, stupidity, right? It's Hanlon's razor. If we're not if, if you're not comfortable with like how to judge and, and ascribe his, his his lie, are you comfortable calling him stupid in the alternative? Yeah, he's he's ignorant. For sure. So no, ignorant, ignorance is a lack of angles. knowledge. No, ignorance is a lack of knowledge. That that's not the case here. Yeah, yeah I agree. Okay. Okay. Think yeah. Why oh, we to he can't be so. ignorant. Say again, Arwin. If he feeds you back the facts, then he can't be ignorant. Precisely. He's just insane. Precisely. If, he's, if you're using his own words against him to point out his contradictions or where he's incorrect, you can't claim ignorance because he's not ignorant, especially when you're using his own words against oh, him. Is delusional a liar or a retard? Which one would you classify that as? Delusional. It's Insanity. its own separate category. It's the separate category. Why was that? But, 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 but still, but still, I mean, let, let's rewind and slow it down. It's just that you chose to use the word ignorant. If you're going to keep it straight, you can't use ignorant. He's definitely not that. Delusional. I'll go with that then. That's a new option. No, well, it see, no it's not an option. Because delusional means to everybody else, his behavior isn't reasonable. But to him, it is, which means he's clinically insane. Which is interesting because to everybody else on Earth, oh, hold on. his... Well and done. Let's just have John respond, and then I, I don't mind going down that route. It's not something we've explored. Go ahead, John. Well, you know, it's delusional to us for sure, but is it delusional to everybody else on Earth that knows this information? No, no, no. That's not how you judge delusional. Well, hold on. We've got delusional a specific. Uh, not, hold on. It's not a matter of opinion. Exactly. It's not it's a, a matter mechanic. of opinion with the example we've got specifically because the example is very black and white. When it comes to curved triangles, uh -huh. can I give the definition of delusion? Go on. Delusion is a belief that is clearly false and that indicates an abnormality in the affected person's content of thought. Yes, yeah. there you go. There is an abnormality in Matthew. I agree. Then he shouldn't be teaching, John. Hello. I don't disagree with that either. You're not qualified to make that opinion, are you? You are uh -oh. able to call him so a liar. I'm not qualified. 
He should be wiping seals' buttocks. He should be a seal buttocks wiper. That's all he should be doing. I just want to take this on a slightly different tangent. According to this definition, I'm delusional. Let's not. According to this definition, I'm delusional. Hold on, Rebel. I'm really sorry to cut you off. It's your last man on this. But what Anthony Riley brought up earlier, I, I want to segue back to because it's a very interesting point. Anthony's now got us, we've all gone, laboured it to death in terms of what we can or can't define as a liar. But what's a lie? Because it's very easy for somebody in this circumstance, once you define the difference between the two, to be peddling a lie, but not be classified as a liar, as interesting as this is. But this is the circumstance we find ourselves in. Factually and mathematically incorrect, still stated and believed to be true. And there's some of us may be on the fence, some of us saying, yeah, he's definitely a liar, some are saying, no, definitely no malice there. You know, there's lots of different opinions. But when you define what he's saying, I can put it in a sentence or a thumbnail or a title about the lie being peddled. So there's a different distinction. Maybe we could start with Anthony as it was originally his question. But what's a, a lie, Anthony? Well, a lie is anything that you know is false and you push it anyway with the intention to deceive. I don't see how there's a, a, a conflict here. To me, it's, it, it, it is a lie, isn't it, when he says what he says? And he is trying to deceive children because he knows it's false and he does it anyway with that intention to deceive. Whether he can apply yeah, it in the real world or not is irrelevant. It makes him a liar. But if he's I coming with his own preconcepted bias, which is um, obviously he looks at us, right? So Because obviously we're looking at him and he's he thinks, so what does he think of us? He already, so his, his uh, position about us is already a biased view. So he doesn't care when we actually point out that he's a liar, right? Yeah, that's the very that's something I, I brought it. up before. I think very right. valid point. He doesn't care about us, so it doesn't matter to him if we view him as a liar. Well, we haven't yeah, actually addressed matter. that yet, Brian. We haven't. So, it's, a, it's a very good question because that's something we haven't pondered, which is also interesting. The fact that we haven't pondered it, his viewpoint in this, which is to say, well, if we have a bit of empathy for him personally and say is he in a position where he may actually know that he's lying? Because we haven't contemplated that. In other words, we're not too concerned about Matthew personally because we've got the factual information based on what was recorded and broadcast live in terms of what he was wrong about, what he conceded he was wrong about, what we got as ammunition from his own words to fire back at him when he was wrong. So those all things are all set in stone. But do we ponder the 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 actual cognition. What, in other words, what the hell's going through your head, mate? We we can only right. speculate. So right. so basically, he, he might what, have what Anthony con- said is might have is really... He might have contemplated whether he had was lying or not, but he did not overtly express it. We just got that weird laugh and like, haha, this. But he might not be realizing that he was lying, right? He just he had his own lying. way. I, I I think I, I I think what is what is what is important here is the intention, as Anthony said. So intention, of course, makes it a lie. But there's another definition in law used in law, um, which is he should have known, which relates back to his education, right? So even if he says that, well, I did, I was not deliberate, deliberately and intentionally deceiving. He, with his education. It, it's it's evidence that he should have known better. That is correct. That is a standard in law. Recklessness. Yeah, well, that's the standard. He should have been bloody well known better. He's a maths teacher. We're talking about triangles, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. It's even worse than that. If uh, if a popular newspaper publishes an article, it is an assumption within the court of law that you should have known about the subject of the article. So that's how bad it is. Right. So, in the best case scenario that um, you have described, you have a certain degree of education you should have known is the minimal, like bare minimal standard. Um, can, can I bring up a point? Because very um, quiet. the The whole dichotomy of is are they retarded or are they liars? 
the third option was introduced and I didn't introduce it on purpose. And I was told that I can't say that because I'm not qualified. No, I like but it. Now. Just to consider, hold on. It. It's nice. Just to con- other definitions for you as well. Though. But just to consider, Go just on. to consider this: what if the dominant worldview is a delusional one? It is. We know it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is That's that That's why I keep going, pointing out the consensus of reality. Yeah, that's, that's what John's what, asking. Now. I don't know. He's paraphrasing. I don't know. Between stop, this stop, 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 stop. and stop. what is the You can go next, Darwin. Yeah, let me just paraphrase what John's saying. Right. If the current worldview and paradigm that is held by the majority of the Western world and is agreed upon by consensus, if that is delusional, then therefore, like you can't say someone peddling a lie is necessarily a liar, you can't necessarily say that someone peddling the accepted consensus worldview is delusional because they're accepting of a delusional worldview it's the fault of the worldview and they've been indoctrinated into it from birth so that it's kind of guilt they kind of absolve themselves of guilt because they don't know any better now you then have a sticky wicket which is why this is such an interesting discussion with matthew my god that guy will regret so much coming in here <laughs> just saying but it's such an interesting point where do you draw the line? Because in this guy, you can't you can't plead ignorance for him because he's definitely not ignorant. You can't plead stupidity. He's a mathematician. So it's a really interesting one to ponder. Uh, on the head. Johnny B first. Hold oh, on, everyone else. Johnny yeah, B, yeah. go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I would say, for me, he, in front of me, and uh, looking at all, all his videos and what he's doing, and like that, he, he, he's acting like a child. And it's child acting. That is, a, it came for me. He's very innocent, somehow, but very dangerous at the same time. But his persona is absolutely childish. So, I don't know what you mean? How do you mean? He's, I didn't, I didn't, he didn't I strike me that way. That unless you're unless you're referring to how he tries to relate to his students on a on a, on a younger level, which is a difficult thing to do as a teacher. And I'm never going to knock him for that. You know, even if it's a bit cringe when he's got his cap on sideways. You know that that that's just that, that's teachers doing teacher stuff. You can't really knock him for that, can you? He's not yeah, childish. Yeah, I, don't, I don't pick up that vibe from him no, when he interacted here. Let's put it that way. What what is happening there? You know, he is trying to act like the students. He's trying to be popular with the students and so on. And he is acting childish. And, and he's he, and he, he that is his lifestyle now. And he is in a bubble. bubble and uh, and he no, you're, he you're repeating and, yourself. You just you're you're yeah. you're leveling a criticism of how teachers are. And yeah, okay. I mean, teachers are cringe. Yeah, I'm you have to take it in. That. What I mean. His act is like a like a child. He's not acting like an adult. No, I mean, whether he... Whether no, no, he no, 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 I just want to disagree again. I know you've gone around in the same circle three times. Yeah. Not when he was here. He, did not act, he didn't interact with me personally in any way that I could describe as childish. I can't, I can't agree with you. No. If you go to his videos and you go, in that set of circumstances when he's got a room full of... I don't want to say kids. These are young adults. But he's got to try and communicate on a level that they will absorb. And yeah, sometimes when the guy's a bit older, that can be a bit cringe and seem childish. But that doesn't... I can't level... I can't, in good faith, level that criticism. He's it's a teacher. <laughs> yeah, he's a teacher. And you know, he has to be the man to be a teacher. Uh, and he isn't. He is uh, acting like a child. I, that's my point. There's going to be people I'm out not... there, right? I just want to just want to clear this up, right? Because we've laboured it now. Okay. I didn't want, I expect to have to clear this up. Yeah, but... But just, let me, just let me just let me clear it up, please. Bloody hell! Right, there's gonna the, the whole he's a he's a teacher and therefore hold to a whole higher standard that I can get behind. But when we start criticizing people who are in a difficult job, actually educate children, it's not reasonable to start pulling apart how how he is as a teacher. I just think this is unfair. Why we? Why we? Yeah, you're a teacher, I'd have thought, mate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, that's what Adam's reminded me. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. I thank you. There's going to be there's going to be some of his students that go. Early, we were like, we all remember good teachers, and then there's going to be some bad ones. You remember? I remember Mr. Durham when he was crushing cans and showing us gas pressure. That cemented Ooh. itself in my mind permanently because he was a good teacher, right? Came from a background of crappy schools, 
suddenly found himself in a reasonable school and he excelled, right? So you remember your good teachers. He'll be that to a lot of his students. You know, the, cr the cringe factor might be the thing that cements in their mind whatever he was trying to communicate to them in that lesson. So, again, I'll praise him all day long for stuff like that. And I bring yeah, it you back can't knock it. Even if, no, no, uh, even just, if you want... Oh, hold on. I, 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 had, I had Adam and Arwen was also trying to get a word okay. in, I'm sure. Okay. Just throw him out. I, I just... I just want to support. I want to they take it back. I think what Refracted brought up, delusional, is probably the only thing we could fully commit to uh, in terms of a, an accusation. We've argued about lying or um, just um, no, lying. ignorant. Now, I know, but if you listen, I've got one more definition that I think relates to the point, really, that it's the worldview that's delusional that he's stuck in. Um, a delusion is a belief that a person holds that is not based in reality and is not altered or modified when the person is presented with contradictory evidence. As such, people who are suffering from delusional disorder struggle to align their perceptions of reality. And that, to me, is what the world's suffering from and what he suffers right. from. I mean, that, That's I, perfect. I, I, That's the perfect definition. The, the definition that suits isn't actually trapped in cognitive dissonance, liar, malice, malicious, uh, incompetent, stupid. It's delusional. It's perfect. Uh, do you want to repeat it? I want to hear that again. That was excellent. Mm -hmm. A delusion is a belief that a person holds that is not based in reality and is not altered or modified when the person is presented with contradictory evidence. As so it is perfect. A bit more. Sorry. I'll start again or? Edge, carry on. As such, people who are suffering from delusional disorder struggle to align reality with their perceptions of reality. Right. Perfectly describing how somebody who's a mathematician and delusional would be failing to comprehend a description of a right angle or triangle. That's delusion. It's delusional. Yeah. No, it's perfect. You're right. No, it is, Brian. Yep. You're missing a category. Yep. yep. It's a lie. He's a delusional liar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. You're missing a category. Yeah. Go on, Brian. Category. Uh, Brian's trying to get it in. He was next in the queue, yeah, unless I, it was I we not heard, but yeah. I thought maybe it was Brian. What Very exists Brian. in our world right, are people called psychopaths. And don't get confused with people who put on a wig and go around with a knife try to kill people. That's a maniac. Psychopaths are people who will tell a lie right, straight to someone's face and not blink, uh, not blink, not be bothered about it. They turn around and walk away and they won't think about any consequences of that because yep. their intent, their intent is to, is to deceive and to manipulate. Yep. So you giving him the label of he's just delusional is exactly what a psychopath would want. I view yep. him as a psychopath. He's too cool and calm. One second. Yep. You're too cool and calm. Right. Please stop. Right. Can I ask you? Hang on, John. I'm not okay. finished speaking. Hang on, John. I'm not finished speaking. He's uh, too cool it's... and calm for someone who is cognitive dissonance, uh, delusional, ignorant, stupid. We know he's not ignorant and stupid in this in, uh, in this in this case. No, the guy is a psychopath, and he'll say anything at any time and not care about the consequences. I got to defend him, yeah, he is, because I, I know him well enough to know what those cues you're you're looking for looks like in him as an individual. When he laughs at something, when he gets snooty, it's not something that you recognize on him because he tries to be as nice as possible, but it, he has buttons as well, and he has exposed, it, it has been exposed that he has those feelings. Yeah, that last. And, it's, and, and, and the caveat and the caveat is that no, it doesn't mean a malicious, um, knife killing Jason Michael Myers. That's what he clarified. So no, it doesn't have to be somebody that's vicious. But that is exactly what it is. They can literally hold a straight face and lie, knowing they got the blood on their hands or the cookies on their mouth or the doo doo on their shoes. And that's basically what it is. So all that delusional stuff. That goes for the people, the general public, who, like I said, who don't have the masters in math, who didn't finish school, who didn't pay attention to school and got high and cut class. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a person who is an upholding, renowned, I would think, mathematician 
who brags about it, boasts about it, knows all of this, all of the mathematics and everything, and then still decides to do the, the contrary. You know why? Because well, somebody has their foot on his neck. And, and okay, who cares no, whether he, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who, care, who on, cares whether he wears a party point. suit? Ahead, who, ca- who cares whether yeah, who cares whether what his methodology of how he teaches, if he's a, if he's the the student's favorite teacher because he comes in with a Barney suit. Hey kids, we're gonna learn about gas pressure. If he's telling a lie about it, it doesn't matter what his methodology is, whether he's cool, whether he's he's so hip doing it. The fact of the matter is he knows he's lying. That's all that matters. And you describe it. Uh, Brian will also answer it, it's his evil, it's a bad person because or is it something else? That's also a question we have to know, uh, understand. Is this because he's a part, he's, he has something uh, evil inside, or is it something else? I'd need to see some well, other uh, traits, Brian. I mean, you know, I'd need to see him love bombing me or something to, to <laughs> sort of... Psychopath well, is strong, well, Brian. Was, oh, hold on, was, oh, hold on. Uh, Hello, it's the middle of a sentence. Oh, well, sorry, I thought My you were bad. asking me something. Bloody hell. Yeah, you need to do some more than just, you know, act the way he has in that regard if you're going to label him a narcissist or a psychopath. And I was going to say, you know, you need lots and lots of examples to all stack up, one of which would be love bombing. But I was going to say after that, and on a completely separate note, I want to thank him again for putting my link in. I really appreciate it, Matthew. Thank you so much. Yeah, but you, you just you just destroyed your own argument there because he did love bomb you. He put in your link... He Can came he in answer. and he agreed with everything. <laughs> that's what he did. That's not love that's bombing. That's what they do. That's what they do. It's, a, yeah, it's love, love bombing, bombing in a different way. I know what love bombing is. I don't need an explanation. Oh, Jesus, leave me speak. I know what love bombing is. What he is doing is making you comfortable with him. That's what he's doing. And making you think he's an okay guy, that guy. He's all right, that guy. Yeah. Right? To be fair, really and then do he's deceiving thing, you. Right? Then he's deceiving you after that. That's what... That, that's what. That's the whole. No matter what route they take, it's the same outcome that they're looking for. Ruhif does the you know exact what? same thing, right? You know what? I got chewed out, rightfully so, by I think it was Steve. Steve, if you're out there, we miss you, bro. Um, Steve got on me because it was a, the topic about Bev and the celestial navigation argument. I guess. I guess that's what it was. The same type of thing. Now, I had made a comment that I had mentioned that I put the comment on the particular video. And what I said was kind of harsh because I, because, you know, and I wasn't saying it in a way of saying it that um, him, regardless if he has a handicapped child and he does not love children. What I said is, to me, I cannot trust an adult with my children that is a pathological, habitual liar. Because in the case of as little as a skint on my child's knee, because that's teacher pushed or hit my child. For instance, when I was a child, I had a scratch on my neck, told my father. My father came to beat the guy up. He lied and said he didn't do it. All the little children said, yes, he did. He grabbed me like that. For an adult to be able to lie like that, for whatever reason, because he didn't want my father with a black belt, to bust his ass. For him to lie, an adult like that, I cannot trust them with my child. I'm with that, you, fellow. To me, to, me, that's a, to me, that's an integrity, moral issue, an F ethics issue I mean, um you know ethics issue with me especially if you have no motive okay now we're, 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 we're putting aside the motive that i said it's because he's trying to take care of his livelihood nathan said well this comes to a time when man has to make a decision and say you know what i'm not going to do this because i don't like where i'm working at but at the end of the day it's a cognitive decision he's making because somebody has their foot on his neck and said you teach what i tell you to teach or you're not working here so he decides to do what his superior tells him to do because he knows better he knows better. We know better. We we will never send any uh, our our child to in front of teacher like that. That is terrible, terrible things. Just think about it. But it's so fucking terrible. So I that, absolutely that's not miss you. the behavior of a psychopath. You're missing the point. Yeah, it it doesn't right. matter where on, it doesn't matter what his position in society is, it doesn't matter if poor rich aunt has doesn't matter. That person and their intent and what they want out of it makes no difference to them what they say or what the consequences are. That's what a psychopath is. The so consequences don't matter. Take all so, that out of it. So, Brian, you're saying he's a delusional, psychopathic liar. No, he's not delusional. 
He knows exactly what he's doing because his agenda is outside the agenda. That what we're like, it's like maybe it's because of he likes the globe. Maybe it's because of this. Maybe it's because of that. Because of that. No, it's a personal thing with him and other people. That's what it is. He wants to get one yeah. over on other people. Other people. That's what these people do. I know people who are those exact people. There is yep. nothing the psych- they won't do or say. I will give you the more. It's a parasite. It's a fucking parasite. That is the right word. That is the the right thing to say about him. He's a fucking parasite on uh, uh, normal life that we want to live, and he is a fucking parasite. On normal life. That is my. Right, you said that four times, John. Yeah, I see. I said. I, I said four times. I just wanted to say three times. You know, it's interesting that we can articulate the moment of uh, the delusional worldview and how it conflicts with reality. How you can understand that you can't get an angle with a curved baseline. You're using Earth as a baseline when you're measuring angles to things in the sky um so it can't be a sphere like we can understand the point at which their delusion happens but we still want to ascribe malice to it i don't get it human nature i blame someone right yeah, what... yeah. you're saying we still wouldn't ascribe malice to it or we would well, we can once the person has has reiterated. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm asking. Previous person, what did they mean by that? Would or wouldn't? It seems that people want to ascribe malice to delusion, and it's just delusion. And but it's become the dominant worldview. I, if anything, I pity That's them for. It. Well, when Adam read that, That's I kind exactly. of agreed with it. Here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. That. Here we go again. What do you agree? It, you're confusing a person's worldview with an objective fact. How many times? How no, many times do you have to weasel this in? No, it's it's delusion. His the objective facts of the matter doesn't comport with his worldview. That's it's a delusional worldview. I don't give a shit about his worldview. I'm concerned with how he doesn't know what an angle is. He does know. He's guilty. Well, I'm I'm making an yeah, assessment. That he, he has a and, 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 and to continue what, what QE is saying, not only did this man know what an angle is, he knew that Era, E-R-R-O, Stosthenes, who made an error, did not do so to measure or to confirmed that the earth was a globe. It was all assumption. He knew all of the ins and outs. He knew the language in five different linguistics. There's, I don't know, what what does it take? This man knew exactly. Of guy, if you walk up to a guy, right, yeah, I don't and know. he sees wasps everywhere, and he thinks they're stinging him, in his mind, he thinks it. But objectively, you can say, look, you're, you're not getting stung. But he still thinks he sees the wasps. Do you call him a liar? God. Do you call him ignorant? Or do you pity him because there's something wrong with him? False equivalence fallacy. He's I was math- just going to say that. Exactly. He, he's, a math- fallacy. he's a mathematician that knows what an angle is. Period. End of story. And he's I'm a, sure this guy knows what wasps are. Yep. If he's a waspologist, uh, if he's a waspologist, you're sure your delusional he conjured wasp, wasp guy knows what wasps are. Thank is you. that your argument? Thank you. Holy Thank shit. you, Q. Who's talking behind me? Sorry, Q. Holy shit. Who was that? It's D Rose. It's D Rose. Get him. Get him. Who My else? God. <laughs> Who else? It was, it was not me. It was not me. It was not Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can only be the usual good. suspects, and I think I fall in that category, but it wasn't me. Yeah. But according to this discussion, and I don't know much about Matthew, to be honest, aside from the uh, the first time I encountered the interaction of um, <clears throat> Nathan and Matthew and the recent video, like the way with that, you know, dissecting the whole scenario, it seems like he's a delusional, psychopathic liar. Right? It's it's there's no two ways about it. 
based on the conversation that we have so far. Perfect. With that, I'm going to say another huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and Chief Whisper Panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primering streams. Hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, joining as a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.